Oh damn, here we go! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to uh, the new episode, a new episode of Hostility, episode two, some four weeks later after something like that, after episode one, there were things that happened, complications, it happens, this is the show where I prove I have friends and I introduce them to you. Is it for my own (laughs) ego? Almost certainly. Uh, but also because these are people that I think are important and out there, uh, and, and I want to introduce to other people. And so I want to introduce one of my newer friends, somebody that I followed on Twitter for a long time and have, have just thoroughly enjoyed watching how this person just has, has an amazing ability to just trigger conservatives and religious people, but also trigger uh, her own side but let's start with introducing you all to nikki aka beat the cult on twitter nikki why don't you tell people about you and uh where they find you where this is like your podcast is all of that sort of thing and then we'll 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 get the dive in going excellent well thank you so much for having me jimmy thank you so great to finally do something with you i've been watching you for some time and i love your stuff so i'm honored Enough about me, more about you. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, yes, uh, my name is Nikki. I am with Beat the Cult. I was formerly known as Skeptic Nikki, but I was a little bit more, I guess, rambunctious in those days, so Twitter kind of shut me down. But Mm. I have mellowed out quite a bit, and now I'm back um, on Twitter at Beat the Cult. But I didn't just want to limit my um, influence to social media, so I started the podcast Beat the Cult, and I just did my fourth episode yesterday, actually, with uh, Damien Marie at Hope, who is incredibly awesome. And I will be doing my next episode this upcoming Monday with Theological Joe, who is my first theist. And I'm so happy to have him on as he has had me on his podcast three times up to this point. So we are we're up and ru- we're up and running now. Do you expect that to be a contentious conversation or uh, trying to find where we agree and then maybe talking? What what kind of conversation do you expect the theist conversation to be like? Well, Joe is amazing. We've actually talked several times before, um, and he, we're very amicable when we speak. He's not um, really one of those fire and brimstone types of Christians at all. That's sure. like why we get along so well. And it's just, he's cool. So no, I don't anticipate it to be um, contentious at all. Good. Good. I'll come for it, Joe, if not. Uh, <laughs> what Just I love, <laughs> and, and right now there, there's this hard thing about where I am often producing the shows that I'm also on, which is a thing that's happening right now. So as people are like, oh my God, he's being so rude and not even listening. It's as I'm also doing stuff that has to be done for the show. But cool. let's start with this uh, as we're having this conversation, explain to people, this is still a Colin show. You have two atheists, you have two skeptics here. Uh, And so who should call in? If you're an atheist and you have questions about interacting with theists, if you have questions about, you know, your, I I would sort of say a similar guide to what we generally do on the Sunday show would be what to do here. Call in about uh, whatever question about the, now, if you're a theist and you'd like to debate and tell (laughs) us we're wrong and tell us God exists, I want to hear from you way more. Like atheist calls are, are fine. Theus calls amazing. Let's and tell us why uh, we're wrong. You know, tell us why we should believe in God. Those are the people who should call. One of the things Absolutely. I really, really, really love about your Twitter is the way <laughs> you will you'll post like you'll just post questions, and it's funny because one of the things I actually enjoy more than the theists who respond because I'm used to, I I've, I've been doing this for five years, almost this February to be five years that I've been doing YouTube, uh, which feels like an eternity, but Matt, I'm sure would still be like, you're a fucking weeb, not weeb, newbie. What's <laughs> noob was the word I was looking for. Weeb also sometimes that's how I pass some of my time, but mostly a noob. uh, <laughs> Uh, you're fucking new, but, but I've seen plenty of the, like, when you ask some question, the way theists react, and I do enjoy seeing those too. But what's really funny is sometimes you'll ask something just as a thought experiment and atheists will come at you presuming to know what your side of it is. So you'll ask a question like, do atheists hate God? And they'll like show up and they'll just be like, 
oh my God, I'm so tired of this. You just think that <laughs> that we're like sitting around, do I hate Gandalf? Do I hate Sauron? <laughs> do I Robert Durbin? And, and it's it's really funny and interesting to see and all of these these thought experiment questions you'll do. And you you just put a prompt so that a, a a duel will occur within the comments which follow. And I just and I just love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about that yes. at all? Like what 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 your favorite interactions are? Do you more enjoy the ones where you jump in and argue, or do you enjoy starting the fire and then just sort of stepping back? I'm watching it burn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I actually prefer to watch the arguments um because Arguing on, on Twitter isn't a futile exercise, but it's an exhausting one. Mm -hmm. And I don't always have time to respond to everyone who, you know, because I get like over a thousand responses to a lot of tweets. And that is very time consuming. So I prefer to post the questions. I'd like to get as many unique answers as possible um, and, um, and just see what kind of responses people give and, and see how the conversations evolve. My phone started yeah. playing automatically something, <laughs> a woodworking so thing. I was literally just posting to my like regular YouTube channel. I was posting to the channel a link to this, and then I put it down <laughs> and a woodworking thing about uh, fake woodworker tools, tools to fake mm. being a good woodworker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just started kind of auto playing. Oh, entirely rude. What a professional I am here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to, we'll get into calls here shortly. I've got, uh, I've, I've got stuff to shoot on. Talk more about, uh, your podcast and what you, what, what you want the overall purpose of your podcast to be, what, what types of stories you're wanting to hear and everything, what a person can expect if they come check out your podcast. So originally my dream was to have the podcast be focused on conversations with theists as I'm trying to kind of break into the debate space or the conversation space as there's not a lot of representation for people who look like me. And it's a very odd thing to do kind of generally speaking. So I had that kind of in my head, but I wanted to start off with some people I trusted, some friends of mine first, um, just to get my feet wet and kind of acclimate to the way things go or work <clears throat> yeah. in the podcast space, especially in the secular community. But um, as I am starting to put out episodes and starting to kind of request um, theists to come speak with me, I am starting to book a couple. And mm -hmm. I have, of course, Joseph next week, and I'm hoping to book uh, K-Dub. Uh, his name is Chris. I did a conversation with him on Joseph's podcast uh, about a month ago. And I did not know he was a presuppositionalist, so it threw me off guard a bit. <laughs> but um, I would like to have that conversation with him again. So I'm hoping to get him on next month as well. And uh, there's another gentleman I'm hoping to get on a couple of people. So I would eventually like this to be educational. Um, I'd like to show some representation. And I don't want to just kind of hone in on these, um, on these traits specifically, but there are not a lot of African Americans who are well versed in scientific literacy or philosophical jargon. So I would like to be some type of a representative to encourage them to ask more questions and realize that there are people like us out there who do study these things and do care about these things and have broken away from religion and live full, happy lives without Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. I, uh, uh, I, I think that's a huge thing too. Cause we obviously like right now, when you look at the atheist community, at least I'm queer, but other than that, everybody seems to look quite a bit like me. I, I'm the most <laughs> handsome, obviously. That's every, every year there's a vote, and I always write up to the top. They're like, best looking cis white atheist man. That's the, <laughs> and that Jimmy just Snow. represents. And, and, and so it's <laughs> nice to have people like yourself, uh, uh, especially for communities that I think are sort of even wary of the atheist community and, and have misconceptions about, I, I mean, I've, I've, I lived in the South before we moved to Wyoming and stuff where there was no black people around, like six of them in the whole state or something. But, but it, 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 you see culturally in a lot of areas that are heavily Christian uh, and, and there's more racial diversity in those areas, the concept of like atheist is just a bad word and me and mm -hmm. is so packed in with so much stuff. 
uh, that it's, mm-hmm. it is it is good to see people like yourself. I also love Phil Sessions, who's out doing a lot of, Ooh, of that great. same work. Yeah, Phil's amazing. Uh, it, it's really great to see that and and talk about all of that. Is somebody trying to say Forrest has dethroned me? Forrest is a handsome lad. That's true. That's very, very true. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Forrest is. Forrest has dethroned you. But I could grow a beard. Uh, all right. Let's... <laughs> let's, let's I, for all I know, Forrest can too. He just doesn't have one. I don't know what his beard situation is. Let's. Uh, I think it'd be fun to to hop into some calls and and start speaking with some people. Uh, again, if you are a theist and you want to call in and challenge us, we'd love to hear from you. If you are an atheist who want to talk about, we have somebody here who specifically is is. Uh, uh, talking to communities of color and saying like, we're not weird. If you want to talk about that topic, you want to talk about, uh, uh, because yeah, yeah, there's, there's, and then also, are we allowed to tell everyone you're gay? Is that? Oh, sure. I'm a lesbian. I, so yeah, I, I, I knew we cute could. girls out there. That's right. If you want to talk about okay. navigating <laughs> navigating the world as a black lesbian atheist, I feel like it, this is one of those shows where you could call in, don't be rude, but you could use a pseudonym uh, if you're like, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to ask this question because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, this is the, this would be, we take those types of calls. And as long as you take correction, if that is necessary, <laughs> it'll be polite. And I don't think, I don't think either of us are afraid of most questions. The only questions mm-hmm. I'm afraid of are the ones that get us demonetized. That's the only ones I'm afraid yeah. of. We got a business what, to what run here. What would be an example of that? I don't know. What would be an example I mean, Before, without getting demonetized, what would be? <laughs> we've had people who will like call in and then just try to like, oh, am I on the air? And then they're like, swear word, swear word, say, trans slur, racial slur, oh, that I sort see. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only okay. calls that are. And then now that I've said that, no, we're not gonna have we're not that's gonna have a somebody's <laughs> requesting a poll for objectifying hosts. No, that's not mostly for my <laughs> own. If I lost, uh, you know, I could do one of these like. Uh, uh, option one is, uh, let's see, most <laughs> handsome host. And then option <laughs> one is Jimmy Snow. And then option two is <laughs> Mr. Atheist. That's y'all can. Mr. Atheist. <laughs> that's my old, that's the, that's my I old was pseudonym. Say, that's you. They're uh, both me. They're, but you all can pick which one was better looking. I mean, Mr. Atheist more had. I, you know, I'll still be Mr. Atheist from time to time, but I feel like people associate that with the long haired version of me, mm, the man bun yeah. version of me. I recall that. That's I right. Do. That's right. That. And, and remember, as you're evaluating, uh, uh, you know, separate from this, which one's the best Forrest spoke down to man buns on yesterday's show. I just want to make sure everybody remembers, <laughs> remembers that, that Forrest was talking crap about man buns. Anyway, uh, I think that was last night or maybe it was the day before. And I told him, Hey, don't, don't fuck with man, but let's talk <laughs> to, uh, they are in here as sheep of Jesus, Emmanuel sheep of Jesus. We've, we've talked, we couldn't get anywhere on Sunday because Ooh. the topic you had called in was to defend uh, the, necessity at times of slavery. Uh, oh, and basically it, we, we got to this point where I said, if I can't explain to you, if you can't understand that slavery is wrong, just on the basis of you'd never want to be a slave, uh, then I don't know how to explain it to you. If you can't get that now, it looks like you're going to try a different topic today. So sheep of Jesus, who used to call in as, as slave of Jesus, but now I guess is sheep. Uh, it's yeah, Emmanuel, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Uh, what do you got for us today? I, uh, what's the, uh, what's the topic you want to, to approach today? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say to Jimmy, I never said, uh, you know, slavery is good at times. I said, slavery is okay. If you do it to another race. That is different from you. First of all, that's, you that's just like you just said I never said slavery is okay at times. I said it's okay at these times. There's no difference in the two positions. Be, because the verse that I mentioned was Jewish people could enslave heathens according to Okay, Exodus so in, in that scenario, was that okay for Jews to enslave heathens? 
Yes, because and so I you are saying that slavery God. is sometimes okay. You get that, right, Emmanuel? This is how language works. This is how positions work. If it's okay for Jews to have heathen slaves, that in in that even if you just say at that specific time with those specific instructions, because you're incredibly ignorant of the Bible, we've already found that out many times in here. But even if you say just then it was okay, you are saying that at certain times, under certain conditions, slavery is okay. So you don't get to call in and start off and say, Jimmy, you're misrepresenting presenting me. I didn't say slavery was okay sometimes. I said slavery was okay at this specific time. That's that same position. Do you want to present your thing or do you want to once again get nowhere because your indefensible position is garbage and dog shit? Do you want to go with today's topic or the past topic? Do you really want to? You pick, Emmanuel. Okay, let's go with today's topic. Right. Uh, I just want to ask something for Nikki. So are there black people outside of like, do you think African-Americans are the only black people or do you think there are black people who aren't African-Americans? That's the first question. That's a really stupid question, yeah. Emmanuel. You, you do know that Africans exist without being African-Americans, right? Emmanuel, you've heard of yeah, yeah, just because, Africans? Yeah, be, because I'm African and I'm kind of dark skinned but I'm not African American. So, so you're asking you know, black if, people say I'm black. You are black. So, no, you're just my, not African American. Well, unless you are, if you live yeah, in America, I, I don't know if you're a citizen of America. You said you're from Texas. I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not a citizen of America, uh, America. I'm actually Ethiopian. I'm from Africa. Okay. And, okay. So I would still say that you're black, even though you're not African American, you can be Haitian, you can be Jamaican, you can be, any other, um, you can hail from any other country or region. You don't have to be African American to be black. Okay, so today's topic, what I want to mention about was uh, one second. How I'm sorry, before, I, before I have to stop you. And, and this is unfortunately a okay. callback. And just to clarify what you said, I know we're going with another topic, but you're African and you said it's okay to own people as long as they do not um, fall within your own racial group. Yeah. Hmm. That's a very interesting perspective for an African man. Said, yeah, but it's like if they don't worship God, I said, because heathens don't actually worship God according to First Thessalonians 4. So, so uh, because a person I is mean, a heathen, like, they deserve to be owned by another person? No, I said you could own another person if that person doesn't worship God according to the Old Testament. So, so I have you know, a question for you. Country, if Muslims kind of had law. the same concept, okay. if Muslims had the same concept and said that they could uh, enslave people who didn't believe in their God, would you be willing to be enslaved by them? Uh, absolutely, because, uh, you know, Scripture says in Colossians 3.22 that servants will be your masters. So if mm. I was like, uh, you know, under, if I was like owned by someone, I'd probably be like an uh, obedient slave. I think that also goes with Ephesians 6, 5, where the Bible says slaves obey your masters uh, to your so master as you worship your perspective Christ. Is that, uh, your perspective is that because the Bible says that it's okay to own somebody, that it's okay to do that. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying was, you know, the Bible you keep says quoting the you Bible. can free yourself. Yeah, but the, let, let's see the content because... The Bible says that if you could free yourself from slavery, free yourself. It says in First Corinthians that contradicts, uh, 7 and that, contradicts but, but that contradicts the concept no, 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 that you just you, that you just said of being an obedient slave to your master. An obedient slave is not going to try yeah, to free themselves. Yeah, but if, if there's like a law that bans slavery, it's okay to be free. But if you can't free yourself, you just gotta be obedient. That's what the Bible but, says. I think that's kind obedience. of like No, it's it's not because obedience to the master means staying his slave whether it's okay or not. So you either obedient no. to the master or you try to free yourself. Yeah, if you're you already in slavery, you shouldn't free yourself because you, you should know, not free yourself. You shouldn't free yourself. But if you have the opportunity and if you're born free without being nobody's slave, 
then you don't have to be a slave. That's what it means. So I don't what think if you're it's like a, a contradiction. Then, and that person, it, it is because you you just you simultaneously said that if you're born free, you don't have to be a slave and should remain free. By also, but also saying that someone who doesn't believe in God, whether they're free or not, should be a slave of someone who does. So those are contradictory concepts. No, if you're no, no, because it's the same writer. So the both of like the writer of First Corinthians and Ephesians and Colossians is the same writer. It's Paul. So, so they're contradicting Paul themselves. Is saying is, no, it's like if you're born free, if you're nobody's slave, you shouldn't try to be a slave. But if you're born a slave or you happen to be someone's slave, you shouldn't bother seeking your freedom. That's what it's saying. Okay, so... So I let's think let's put Paul come. aside for oh. let's put Paul aside because you initially quoted the Old Testament stating that heathens were um, able to be enslaved because they didn't believe in God and that if you were enslaved yes. by a Muslim for not believing in their God then you would be an obedient slave to them so that means that in your yes. attempt to be an obedient slave that you would not try to free yourself and also if you were a heathen who was free initially that you should be okay with becoming a slave even if you're born free so you're contradicting yourself there. Uh, okay, uh, let's like agree to disagree. I don't think it contradicts either way you see it. What I'm what I'm trying to say is heathen, according to definition of Romans and First Thessalonians, a heathen is someone who doesn't <laughs> worship God. Hey, Emmanuel, so he, idols. Emmanuel, okay. every single thing that you're defending, okay. one could say is, yeah, you've got a fundamentalist reading, and if you actually read the Bible and and believe it's true. Uh, you could defend some of your positions, not all of them. You've shown yourself ignorant on the Bible many times. Here's the real question that everybody else has. Why the fuck should we care what the Bible says? I was getting to that. Absolutely. I, 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 think, yeah. that's a, uh, I, I think that's a good question. And it's kind of like relevant. It's not even a good question. It's like... the most important question because you are out here advocating for the entirely anti-humanistic position of people owning other people. An actual As an position. African. As right. an African. A, a Who thing lives that, in America? In Texas. A thing that brings harm to people, that when, that abuses people, a thing that is a system in place which has never existed in a way that does not take away the autonomy from somebody. At its very core, an abusive system. You're out here advocating for that. You've advocated for other positions which are ridiculous. So at the end of the day, it's not even a matter of is it good or is it maybe relevant. It's the only question that matters. The Bible only matters and the rules that it advocates only matters. And the way it ad advocates for abusing other people, whether it's slavery or killing certain people or imprisoning certain people or finding revenge on behalf of God for certain people, all of that only matters if you can show that the Bible is true. Emmanuel, why is the Bible true? Okay, so how we could know the Bible is true is, uh, you know, the consistent doctrine of the Old and the New Testament. So no, incorrect. The, that would uh, not be a way because if the Old Testament preceded the New Testament and you wanted it to be consistent, you could read the Old Testament and then make sure the New Testament lined up. And you know what, Emmanuel? They didn't even do that well. Yeah, it's There's, still inconsistent. The New it's Testament isn't consistent with the New Testament, let alone the new consistent with the old. And they're making up bullshit things like a census so that they can try and put Jesus in roughly the right geographic area so that it can kind of follow some of the prophecies. The whole thing is incredibly contradictory, but you can't it say is. that the, it is true because the New Testament is consistent with the Old Testament. One, it's not, but even if it was, that's like saying the first Lord of the Rings book in the second Lord of the Rings book are consistent with each other, and yet both are fiction. So try again. What's an actual good reason to believe the Bible is true? Don't try the consistency one. You've already lost. Give me a reason why it's true, Emmanuel. <laughs> Even the discussion okay, of slavery okay. so, indicates so. that it's not consistent because he's saying that you are able to be enslaved as a heathen who's born free, but also saying that Paul says that you should be or should not be enslaved if you are born free. So those are inconsistent concepts just right there. 
Don't expect a theist to know yeah, the Bible uh, is basically uh, I the lesson. I think maybe it's like a language barrier. No, Which it's not. Can, like, English oh, no. Like, no, it's not. Forgive the... No, sorry, no, I'm, I'm under, from the South as well. Wh- so I, I say, sweetie, honey, bless your heart. Um, I don't mean to be condescending, but it is probably... No, I was using it in a condescending form. I'm not going to pretend I wasn't. <laughs> no, it's not a language barrier. We are we are communicating in English. Your English is very, is very good. So we are understanding each other. I just feel that maybe as an individual who grew up in the church and my family is very religious, that you may have bought into this so much that despite the contradictions and despite the fact that you yourself exist in a society where you behave according to um, respect for others, you are trying to justify this belief to make sense of it for yourself, even though it's not moral. Yeah, but I, yeah, I've read the, uh, the New Testament uh, seven, eight times in Amharic and I've read the Old Testament again and again. I've read, I've studied commentaries. Uh, I've studied, uh, you know, English Bible, Amharic Bible. So I'm pretty much aware of the claims in the New Testament. So the, the New Testament is actually I'm very surprised then with all that study. I, I'm very surprised with all that study yeah. that you're still presenting contradictory verses in an attempt to justify slavery. I'm, I'm surprised with that. But that. Emmanuel, I'm, I'm yeah, still going to advise it, you it, to move on because I've told you, even if it was true, it wouldn't matter. If, if it was yeah, true that they were yeah. consistent, it wouldn't matter. It doesn't make the book more true. It would mean one of the, one of the available options would be whoever was writing the New Testament— also had access to the Old Testament. Again, you are wrong on this, and it's not just a matter of English to Hebrew or whatever, because I I have no shortage of scholars of whatever language you want to put it in who would tell you the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't actually make sense. These are straight up in contradiction. In fact, there are times where you have something like the King James Bible, where during translation, they corrected contradictions as they translated it to English and actually changed core things. And then when you actually go back to original language, it's like, here's the fucked up part. If we go back, it's way worse. So Emmanuel, I would give up on the it's true because the yeah. Old and New Testaments are consistent because that wouldn't matter if that's right or wrong. It happens to be wrong. Even if it was right, it wouldn't matter. So what's a good reason for us to okay. give a shit about the Bible and even suspect that it is true? Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so the biggest evidence that we have is the biggest claim of the Old and the New Testament and the entire Bible is Jesus has died and he has resurrected on the third day. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is also prophes- prophesied, I think, in the book of Isaiah 53. Doesn't uh, matter so if it's prophesied, because that's big... getting back to the... You have zero proof that that actual event happened. We yeah, don't even have... Ask, we actually know. have a lot of... No, go ahead. We have evidence of that, that event no, actually you don't. happened. No, you don't. Because we have... Not yeah, a single person okay, who can, witnessed can it finish? wrote it down. You do not yeah, have evidence that the... It, but, but, but we have a big historical evidence that the apostles died a horrific death for this belief. That, and that's actually that doesn't really matter. Joseph did, Smith died, for, Joseph and, Smith and, died and Muslims for Mormonism. died for their beliefs as well. I mean, do you think that the end of it, do you think Islam is true? Let me ask you that. I'm going back to Islam because it's um, really interesting. I, I don't think Islam is true. Be, okay. So they, if you don't, don't think Islam is true, Jesus, the individuals that it, the plane, that's fine. Those, if you don't believe Islam is true, do you believe um, that the people who flew the plane into the um, the World Trade Center did it for a false belief? Yes. So is it possible that the apostles could have died horrific deaths for a false belief as well? No, no, it's not because it's yes, consistent it is. with the word of God. Uh, yeah, no, and, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, well, they're, they're, Emmanuel, they're consistent with the Quran. you just performed a circular argument because you're, you literally said your evidence that the Bible is true is that the apostles died for it. And the reason why the apostles dying for it wasn't, isn't for an untrue belief is because the Bible says the Bible is true. You literally sure. went back to your source to prove. And by the way, the apostle accounts, these are all also secondhand. These are all also written much, much later by other people. These are the things which are incredibly contradictory. Once again, you do not have, I, I love when people like you call in, because you'll also say like, 
it said there were hundreds, thousands of witnesses saw Jesus Christ again. And, and it says it in this verse. And yet we don't hear from any of them. Nobody no, at that time is writing it down when the single most incredible miracle happened. And we're not even just talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Because it's not just no. that no one who saw the resurrection of Jesus actually wrote it down first town. None of the hundreds to thousands of people who saw their, their family come out of their graves and greeted them yeah. as That'd happens in the Bible, none of them write it down. But you don't get to go back to the Bible and say, no, it's true because the Bible says the Bible is true. And so the beliefs, that's consistent because the Muslims that you just said died for uh, not a true belief. belief also has a book that confirms itself, also has a book that it's yeah. consistent with their word yeah. of God. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, here's the thing. Islam does not believe that God could manifest in the flesh. So, so what? Uh, that's fine. Uh, also, that's their preference. That, that's so a why, contradiction. That, you know, that's, that's the same, you know, with that's the the same argument doctrine. my mother would give. That's the same argument. It, it is a contradiction to the biblical doctrine, but that's the same argument my mother would give when I would ask her as a child, why are the Muslims wrong? And she's like, well, they don't believe Jesus was God. And it's like, well, it's why the same does that thing, matter? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, the yeah, same argument. It's, just, it's, it's literally the same argument. you're saying you're saying your proof that Islam is wrong is that it's inconsistent with Christianity, which suggests that mm -hmm. Christianity has been like I could say the reason why creationism is wrong is it's inconsistent with the model of evolution, and the model of evolution once we once we take it back to there, I can go holy shit, you want proof? I got nothing but proof. It's probably the single best supported theory in all of science, the theory of evolution is. Now, when we do that with you yeah, yeah. and you say Islam isn't true because it's inconsistent with the Bible, that suggests the Bible is true. So once again, right. you failed twice. Why is the Bible true? We do not have evidence that okay. Jesus Christ raised from uh, the dead. Uh, we do not have, you can't do your whole thing of it's consistent because the Old and the New Testament is consistent. What objective way can we verify that the yeah. Bible might even be true? Because I can actually disprove a whole fucking lot about the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, for example, the moral story of the New Testament. No. Nope. Uh, for example, saying nope. that love thy neighbor. Uh, yeah, that's... Love thy neighbor as thy soul. Do you think love Emmanuel? Emmanuel? Do you weird. think that that came love, from love that Emmanuel? Enemy. Do you think Jesus was the first yeah. one to share those messages? Do you think these are? No, do you think Moses that just before the, the Bible one. was written and before the Moses. Old Testament and the New Testament, everyone was just going around and just going like, "We don't want a society." <laughs> I'm killing you. I'm killing you. I'm doing whatever to you. And it was just wild chaos. Communities have figured out the tablets yep. of Hammurabi were hitting a lot of these mm. basic ideas thousands of years. And that's like our first written, the first time we know humans wrote anything down, they were writing about how to treat each other. This is a horrible example. You want to go with, because there are core things in the Bible, which the moral story of love thy neighbor, except the ones you're enslaving, thou shalt not kill, <laughs> except the ones that don't believe the same as you. That's the true. Bible That's a is a point. terrible yeah. source of morality. What the fuck no, are no, you no. talking about, well, Emmanuel? Yeah, Emmanuel. Yeah, I have a question love, before you before you respond. Life. Actually, I, I have a question, oh. please. Um, so obviously yes. there's going to be rebuttals to what you're saying, and obviously, and I hope you go back and you watch this, and I hope you've watched back conversations you've had with Jimmy and Matt. I'm assuming did Matt was Matt on with this person? Matt's given up with this guy because he just he oh, the, the, guy, the guy the guy the guy only <sighs> talks and does not listen, and he doesn't comprehend it. He doesn't he doesn't take it's in rough. what you say and process it. He just goes to the next thing and he just does his, it, it, Emmanuel doesn't listen. He he just Ooh. has the thing he knows he's going to no, push. No, no, I'm listening. I'm listening, Jimmy. Emmanuel, no, you're hearing, you're so, hearing, you're not oh. listening. Well, okay, Emmanuel, listen to this then. Um, let's, let's get past the Bible and all of that um, because the things you're saying are, are easily yeah. um, debunked. And, and of course there's other religions who promote loving your neighbor, neighbor and, and other things like that. Why, why are you so invested in the Bible and Christianity? Can I get some more information on that? And maybe you'll give me a framework for why you're advocating so much for it? Yeah, yeah uh, because I've studied the Bible cover to cover 
uh, you know, I've devoted my time. The reason I did that, because if I believe and if I follow Jesus Christ, I got to be informed by his knowledge. So Bible says that don't that. rely on your understanding. Yeah, because uh, don't rely on your understanding and trust in the Lord. Uh, scripture says in Proverbs. So if age, you got a tr- such a... So that verse that he's talking about literally is advocating for when you have questions and there is contradictory information, you just go, I can't answer that question. There is no good answer to that question. So I'm just going to trust the Lord. You've just proven my religion wrong. So what I'm going to do is pretend you didn't and that it's a lack of understanding on my part. And I'm just going to trust the Lord and keep believing it anyway. What a posi- what a what a system of ignorance to commit yourself to. Tremendous. In addition to that as well, uh, in addition to that as well, I'm sure, Emmanuel, that there are things in the Bible you don't agree with. And in order to determine you didn't agree with those things, you are trusting your own understanding in order to disagree. But, but with that, that aside, how long, what was the first, when, was, when did you become a Christian? And who influenced that? So, so uh, I was born in a Christian household, but at the age uh-huh. of 14, uh, I got skeptical. I got skeptical. No, you didn't. Sir, sir, so sir, I, 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 sir, don't abuse that word I like people doubting. so often do. You could say you were doubtful. You can say that the specific way yeah. your parents believed it. But skeptical has a meaning on this fucking show. And you've never okay. shown that you have an ounce of understanding what skeptical means. You have not okay. been a skeptic, my oh, friend, okay. at all. You just advocated moments so, ago for when knowledge becomes too tough to just trust the Lord. No fucking skeptical person indulges faith period that's they're the in, they're yeah, incompatible yeah. faith and skepticism watch your fucking the mouth now go ahead ones. emmanuel uh, that's, that's uh, okay one, but Emmanuel. that's my current understanding so uh okay okay I'll, I'll change my, my my words i started doubting jesus christ i was like well how do i know this thing happened maybe it's like a made-up story i, I started yeah, like doubting and doubting and doubting Okay. So uh, I stopped, I start falling away from Christianity. And during that time, I start practicing a lot of sins, right? So uh, I start being guilty. Oh, go ahead. Okay, you, let, I'm sorry. let's say mistakes. He's already done this story on, things. he's already done this story on here before, and it just comes down to okay. preaching and it's, and it's a bunch of arbitrary and, and, and honestly, uh, the only thing I actually care about is the original question because it's the only thing we need to get past. And then we're going to get to new callers because this is ridiculous. Uh, why? I is- think it's rooted, though. I think it's his history of religion and his, you know, growing up in that house. I believe that's rooted in why he um, and if I'm not mistaken, Emmanuel, let me know. Um, that's why he advocates for the Bible and why he believes it's true, even though it's demonstrably no, false. No, 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 it's not because. I I, I, uh, I started being a Christian again at the age of 16 because I received the the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So So you practice uh, possibly in your church. I I understand. Why is it true? No, no, because there's no, honestly, none of this matters. Why is it true, man? You had all all the reasons you've given so far were garbage. Give us a good one. Okay. because I grew up in a, um, a Mennonite church, and they did not believe and speaking in tongues. That was really odd from the church that I grew up in. So that's you when I be started, the because Mennonite? at the age of six. Now, wait, the, the only thing you is— You think the, the Mennonites think Pentecostal don't fall for practices are odd? Don't fall don't for do it. it. Right. He I'll just was that. asked a question and then didn't answer it. He said what he wanted to say— instead of the answer to the question. So Emmanuel, I'm going to give you a different question now. And your only option is to answer the question that I have, because we've already wasted 25 fucking minutes on this and you've got to nowhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's been a, this has been a 25 minute call so far. We've got to nowhere because you don't have anywhere to take it. So Emmanuel, could you be wrong? Could Christianity be untrue? Good question. No, it could not. Good. See you later. Because what's the point? If if there's no way, if you in your mind are not even going to come and have the conversation, I all we do on this show is offer you examples of ways you can tell us something is true. And usually it's by telling you how we got to other truths. And all you have to right. do is match it. You have to meet the standard that things like the stove is hot meets. 
And actually, I believe in more <laughs> things that, that are uh, things more obscure than that. But I'm not going to waste time with somebody who's coming to have a conversation about religion. And when you ask him what's proof that the Bible is true, his answers boil down to the Bible says it is. That's pretty mm -hmm. much what it boils down to. And if you're going to come and have this yeah. conversation with us and you're saying you're not even going to consider, you have shut off your mind, which is what has happened. You have shut off your mind to correction. What's the actual point? If you ask me, could evolution be untrue? I'd tell you anything could be untrue. And I'm yeah, ready to stop believing in evolution the moment you meet the standard which debunks it. Now, is that realistically a very, very hard standard to meet? Yes. Super hard standard to meet. Evolution's been way over demonstrated that it's amazing yeah, that absolutely. idiots still yeah. say stupid shit like, Meh. well, then why are there still monkeys? Fucking idiots. They just but, don't understand the concept. It's really but, unfortunate. And they avoid <laughs> understanding the concept, truly. Like they try. It, it, it's, it's really sad because evolution can be true and God still exists technically. Um, sure. And that's, evolution is not a debunking for the concept of God, depending on the you know definition. But I, you can be a Christian and understand evolution. It's not contradictory. Exactly. Uh, right now, I think some calls are being screened. If anybody is interested right now, we've already got atheist calls on the line. So we're going to reserve current slots for theists. Uh, and so if, if, if you're currently waiting to be screened and you're not a theist, I would just go ahead and hang up if I was you, uh, because right now all the atheist slots are full. I'd like I'd like to talk to more theists, especially if an honest theist wanted to show up and wanted to answer questions. Like when you say, "What's a good reason the Bible is true?" If the next words out of your mouth are because Mennonites don't believe in tongues, you you aren't participating. That isn't how this works, and you don't get a, this isn't your show, it's ours. We no, direct the conversation and where it goes, and as long as you're honest, you'll have a good time. But when you're so fucking dishonest, and you're just here to waste time, what's the point? Yeah, I've never understood that this Christian is wrong for this reason, and, and they don't really believe according to what's true in the Bible. That Nobody has the same concept. There's no quote-unquote Christian worldview Christians argue all the time, yeah. and it's, it's just one Christian having a different perspective isn't just, you know, that's not a justified reason for the Bible being true or wrong or yeah. really either, so. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> his his whole thing about, like, he had become a sinner, everything comes down to, one, some of the things that he believed were sins just aren't. Uh, I, I mean, sin isn't a real concept and stuff, but it's just arbitrary rules. But by following True. those rules, he gets a community of people that affirm him. That's the force that's at work. It's the affirming community. As it so sure. fucking is with pretty much every religion, affirming community is what they're almost always in it for. Uh, and that's uh, the benefit. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. it's the benefit's rooted in falsehood. Yeah. And that's a problem. But I also notice a trend of people becoming like starting to question right when they hit puberty and yep. then starting to engage in, I guess, carnal desires, which are indicative of hitting puberty. And then going back to being religious as people are telling them that their carnal desires are sins, quote unquote, making them feel guilty about it and then pulling them back into the church. Yep. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's talk to an atheist in Florida. We're talking to Edzie. Edzie from Florida, you are on the line. You want to talk about worry that you have, uh, that you maybe did some potential harm during Christmas uh, with your family. Edzie, tell us what you're here to Ooh. ask about. Uh, yes, uh, J Jim, and uh, first time uh, speaking with uh, Nikki. Uh, I've been uh, watching uh, the shows uh, for quite a few years, and I'm Ooh. very impressed. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, with what you guys are doing, and, and this is outstanding. Um, my situation is uh, I, I, I've been an atheist for quite a while. However, uh, before that, I was a uh, old tambourine rattling, almost <laughs> snakes, uh, Baptist. Oh, wow. And the fun type. Uh, and quite frankly, I I did uh, I, I was very anti-gay, and my daughter was gay, 
and I uh, made the tragic mistake of rejecting her at a, an early age. And I'm I glad was you realized very, that because my parents were not, so well done. Oh, very, very wrong. Sure. And it, it, it took me years after that uh, through education, actually, uh, uh, because I always did have questions about religion that I went uh, to college, real college, and uh, <laughs> just and, uh, and explored, you know, where did religion come from and everything. And I realized that, yeah, this is bullshit. And... Mm. However, in the meantime, I did a lot of damage to my family. I rejected so? my daughter. I rejected her. Oh. I rejected my daughter. I rejected her wife. I mm. re rejected my grandson. Uh, and Edzy, Edzy, uh, is that something you've corrected in the meantime? Are they no contact with you? Don't want to talk to you about that, it, or that was that's what's happening now. Okay. Uh, I've in, in the last year, I've uh, uh, reconnected with my daughter. Good. And, that's uh, great. And and, uh, and actually, for the first time, been able to speak to my grandson. Cool. That's excellent. And well done. Hey, just, uh, uh, Edzie, there... Edzie, before we go forward further, just because you have to understand we're doing a show and stuff and there's got to be a structure and a flow and a pace to everything, I'm just going to try and encourage you to be a little bit succinct uh, and give us whatever detail we need, uh, but if we can get around to the question and, and, and what, you're, what uh, insight you're looking for when you call in. Well, how, how after being such an a-hole, mm -hmm. how... Do I reconnect? So how do I say I'm so sorry? Go ahead. Well, as someone who has currently reject been rejected, um, well, my sexuality been rejected by my family, and and they're you know not um, agreeing with my uh, wanting to marry a woman and have children uh, or adopt. My father implying that he would not. Uh, treat my adopted kids as his grandchildren. It's very painful. I've actually cut them off in my sisters, but in the, in the interest of being succinct, I would say put forth the effort. Do they live close by? Edzy? Hello? Edzy, it looks like we okay. might have lost your audio here. So, Edzy, what, what I'm going to encourage you to do is uh, we'll let the call go now, but just go back and listen. I don't know if you can hear us. Uh, just go back and listen to our our answers uh, after the fact, but we'll we'll finish up the answering uh, and sure. uh, and still answer the question before we move on to the next call. Sure. Um, yes. So if they live close by, um, spend more time with them. Um, show them that you have changed your perspective. Show them that you care about their life. Maybe by providing them with, I mean, being a father, maybe financial support or even guidance, and be profusely apologetic. And, and uh, the more time you spend with them, the more they'll be able to see that. And hopefully you can patch up those um, those feelings and, and build, rebuild your relationship with them. But it, I just want to commend you on and, you know, realizing that you were wrong. And uh, my brother's gay as well. And, and he wants, I'm sure, to commend you for reconnecting with your children and, and actually taking the time to research and understand there's nothing wrong with being homosexual. Yeah. Uh, one of the things when this comes up with other people, uh, I, and by the way, for people who are uh, waiting, there are uh, two lines open. So if you've got a question, we do especially like to hear from a theist, but I think there's at least room for one atheist as well. Uh, so people who are thinking about calling uh, right now, you've got one atheist, one theist slot, uh, or two theist slot. If two theists call in a row, we'll, we'll take both theists. Um, when this topic comes up, one of the things that I feel like is so unnatural and people are starting to learn how to do it. And they're usually, it's usually people who are going to therapy who are starting to learn how to do it. So first of all, go to therapy, get a go therapist therapy. if you can, if you've got the resources, because a therapist is going to be great at, at guiding you in communicating with other people. And it feels very exactly. unnatural at first when it stops feeling unnatural, it becomes a superpower. Because right now, most of societies, they interact with each other, have no fucking idea what the boundaries should be. And yet, no. we're terrified of the question, hey, 
What should the boundaries be? People don't just ask that question in that form to each other. Why not do it? Like it's, it's every romantic relationship, every platonic relationship. Hey, what are our boundaries? And just talk about it and, and, and have it be something that changes. And then the second bit of like really important advice is respect them. You're going to have to swallow some fucking ego because it's tough because you want to do it at your pace. I have people from my past, from when I was a bastard of a person who do not want to talk to me and I'm not going to force it through. I, I feel like it is very much to me, like if you would have the conversation with me, you would be very impressed with how much I've changed. But they were the one who set the boundary and I don't get to betray that and go like, there's, there's like one ex that I specifically think about who just has this idea of, of what a monster and a bastard I was. And she had decided at one point years ago, I don't even want to try to be friends. I don't want to talk. Let's not talk at all. And I have never once tried to breach that, even since changing as a person. And that's tough because I don't want that to be the impression of somebody who actually knew me once upon a time. There's lots of people on the internet who still think I'm a bastard. I can't do anything about them. Uh, they, they have crazy conspiracies about me that at this point kind of make me laugh because everything's a conspiracy. <laughs> they're, they're, it's hilarious at this point. They, they used to bother me. Now they're just funny. I'll tell you off air. <laughs> that these, these are, uh, but, but you can't do anything about pathetic people who don't care about the truth and, and are invested in hating you. If a person... Right wants to, if they say like, Hey, yes, in this scenario with Ed Z, you can, you can spend time with my son. You can spend time with me. And then I want some time off because sure. with seeing you is going to bring up feelings for me. It's uh. literally like I was, I was at, uh, I, I told the story already, uh, on yes, yesterday's show or the day before on the new year show, but, uh, Matt and I went to, um, Matt and I went to, uh, with Arden to a wings place, last Thursday or Friday. Uh, and we had dinner. And at that dinner, I was talking about a relationship that had ended that was hard, that there were things about. I'm not going to go into details. It's, uh, it, I, but there were elements of that story that were very hard. Uh, and, and we talked about this and, we, and, and I was sort of talking about like where I am now and how I'm feeling and stuff. And that night I had dreams about that person. And I think it's happened again since then, just, but, but it's, it's literally like just bringing that to the surface. And I didn't even see the person just bringing it to the surface and talking about it. When I went to bed, my brain went, no, 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 no. You're not done with this. We're going to make this worse. And you're going to wake up feeling sad. You're going to wake up feeling lonely. That shit happens. And when oh, we're shit. very yeah. you centric, when we're very I centric, me centric, what my boundaries are, what matters, how quickly I want to fix this relationship. Like, what about, what about that desire in me? That's for you to fucking figure out. And so if you get a situation mm -hmm. and I don't know, Edzy might be great at this, but this is sort of general advice for everybody. If you get a situation where somebody is allowing you to try and make up for what a piece of shit you were to them in the past, ask them what their boundaries are. And to tell you the truth, if you know, like the type of stuff that I just said, I, I would literally, if the person who I was saying from my past, I wish I could show I'm not a bastard to anymore, agree <laughs> to that conversation, I would bring up like, hey, could we have, could we talk, maybe sit down for a couple hours, talk, catch up, and then maybe we take two weeks away from each other so we can process what, and in reality, I, that would be for it. You can be, you can suggest things that a person might feel like is impolite because we treat everybody like everything is impolite to ask. So even if the right thing for her would be to say, I'd like two weeks after this to not talk and just sit with my feelings after the fact, that feels impolite and a lot of people won't. And so if you can and you can be self-aware and you can, you can find out these things through therapy that are healthy and you can get your desires out of it, it actually makes you feel a lot better too. If, if you suggest that thing that is healthy for them, do you want to take two mm -hmm. weeks before? And by the way, if at the end of the two weeks you feel like you need more time, you just tell me you need more time. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to do in a relationship. I've got friendships that we have shit like that. I'm not going to, it's an, again, where I'm not going to give details, but there's a, there's another YouTuber friend of mine and we both have a tendency to like shut down. Uh, but we don't want the other person to feel um, like we're avoiding them 
if suddenly we go from very talkative and texting and calling or whatever to not at all, uh, because it's just something happening on our end. So we we have a code word. I actually have code words with many people, but this specific one, we just <laughs> set it up because we realized that it happened a couple of times and the other person wasn't really sure something was going on. And so the other night, it was it was literally uh, uh, not the inspiration for the shit that then happened on the show with Forrest last night. But the other night, we decided the word is pterodactyl. If we just want to communicate <gasps> to the other person oh, that right now we're taking pterodactyls. That's right. But we're taking time off. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just doing stuff ourselves. We will reemerge. We will talk. But right now, that's where we feel. We just write the word pterodactyl to each other. Just find out people's fucking boundaries. It's the number one way you can respect somebody. Do it. Excellent. <sighs> and go to therapy. Go to therapy. I had a lot to say about that one. But mostly, be, I, I feel like because I have that complex about like what a bastard I was and all the things that I wish I could correct and and how over the years like since then having to learn you don't get to force what a better person you are on on people no, you don't get to like don't. yeah it's it, in a way you undermine your own thing because you're prioritizing your own feelings over theirs when you try to anyway pterodactyl is a great code word i highly suggest it for people who especially if you're extremely introverted like i am you need to have that set up code words with people. I feel like where you can just say in response to like somebody sent you like six texts over three days and you realize you haven't responded to any and they're probably feeling bad about that where you can just send one word and they go, okay, good. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's, it's great. Fucking great. <laughs> Somebody's mentioning Matt Powell and pterodactyls. Matt Powell thinks that he shared a photo, an obviously Photoshop photo of civil war people <laughs> who had killed a pterodactyl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Goblet's yes. engineer talked about that, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. I think so. John's <laughs> yes. In fact, I'm sure. I've, I I think that's where I found out about it. Um, Very funny. Let me see. I should have I should have set you up on this call in system so you could see and decide which calls you like. By the way, do you? What are your time constraints tonight? I I would imagine we'll go through the calls that are currently here and then we'd read super chats and then we'd call it a day i'm guessing that probably means we'd be done in about an hour from now do you have time constraints what are you no, what are you looking at I'm okay cool 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 i'll even leave then i won't i won't close lines yet just in case somebody real exciting calls in um let's talk to do i have it's the shortcut ready i do let's talk to mark in new york Mark is a theist who was raised Catholic, uh, but believes that natural science provides strong support for an existence of a God. I'm excited to have this conversation. So, Mark from New York, you are on the line. Can you? Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Yeah, are we on speakerphone or something? I do hear myself echo back sometimes. I just took, yeah, my, you know, I, I need a new cell phone, but uh, I'll, I'll take you off of speaker. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Mark, I think we've talked before from your voice. You, you sure do sound familiar. I feel like we talked like a week ago. We have, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm, um, I, I go by Baked Alaska in the oh, chat. Gotcha. You're the one that I'm yeah, always trying to goad into calling in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I try to stir up trouble in the chat from time to time. I get it. I get it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But shout out to the chat. I mean, uh, you have very good. Mo I mean, I'm sort of new to, to this channel and, uh, you know, just actually just like a couple months ago, but sure. I've been very made to feel welcome in the chat and you have really good mods and, and almost everyone in the chat is really nice. And, well, I um, hope I don't ruin your experience today. <laughs> <laughs> Setting you aside, Jimmy. No, I'm just All right. kidding. Mark, I'm I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try and set you up for success. Okay. By telling you, based on your screening, what I think is the direction you're going to go. And I'm gonna try and give okay. you an advantage over me. I'm gonna tell you my chess moves beforehand. I think oh, cool. that almost every argument you're going to give, I'm going to be able to summarize as you've identified a gap in science and you have conflated with the, an answer of God as being better than the answer we don't know. That an answer is better than an I don't know. I think that's what is going to happen here. So if it's not, so you, you're already at an advantage. Mm -hmm. If it is, you yeah, now know so how to I adjust your chess pieces. <laughs> so let's do this. Go ahead, Mark. Knight to F3. That's right. Um, I don't know how to play chess. I'm just, oh, I, I know the basic move, move, move patterns, but I, I'm not Matt. I suck at it. 
Yeah, it's 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 a it's a hard game to kind of grasp at first. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but anyway, I mean, no, it's not a God of the Gaps argument. I think that um, for the most part, I think mo- a lot of the arguments th- sort of rely on scientific evidence in support of a premise. And, you know, so the, there's like a premise within the argument that has obviously like a broader theological implication. And you're using scientific evidence to support that premise. Like, for example, like in the Kalam cosmological argument, one of the premises is that the universe began to exist. And so you would then point to something like Big Bang cosmology in support of that premise. Right. Which, by the way, so the Kalam falls down because we actually don't know if the universe began to exist. Because you can potentially call what preceded the Big Bang still an existing universe, just in a different form. Potentially. But maybe not. Maybe it did start to exist. Maybe everything that we understand in the universe in which we participate has a starting point in its current form. But we can't say there are, there are physicists who believe that the universe in its, in its way is eternal, even with... Uh, uh, there having been a big bang prior, so so that's and where the Kalam doesn't. Oh, go ahead. Well, um, no, just no. to quickly say, the Kalam doesn't say anything about a god. Based on that premise, whatever began to exist has a cause, even if we did demonstrate the universe had uh, had a beginning. Um, that doesn't point to a god or any specific being, or even if it is a being. I, and I know an apologist will pull out and say, "Well, the cause." That's the basically definite. Uh, fine, whatever. Oh, it, you know, it, of course. It, it doesn't matter. But you, you, you <laughs> posit, Lane, Craig. you posit that there's strong support for right. an existence of a god. I don't think you're saying that the Kalam is strong support for the existence of a god, uh, unless you are well, saying so, because it's not a proven. So, the premises can be questioned. So I, I, I look, I look at the Kalam, and I think, and this is kind of the broader point I was going to make, which is like in, in any of these arguments, you can. You could you can bring up counter arguments. Um, you can you know like almost like with, which it almost reminds me of like if there was a trial, you you have what the defense attorneys do is they pick apart each little element of the prosecution's case, mm-hmm. and they and that's their job, right? It's it, it's to attack the evidence and basically say like and, and it's to introduce doubt. All right, Mark. You remember, right. remember at the beginning of this call when I told you I'm going to give you b- moves and I'm going to make you better at arguing? Basically, I'm going to tell you how to beat me at this if there's a way to beat me. Don't use courtroom. <laughs> Don't use being a detective. No, Don't use any of these. And the reason is if it looked – if we almost always, 100% of the time, use that system and got it right, sure, use it. We often yeah. get it wrong or no answer – more often, the number of th- we sleep well at night because we aren't aware of how many serial killers are probably getting away with serial killing. We sleep well at <laughs> yeah. night because we aren't aware of how many murders go unsolved. We sleep well at night because of all sorts of crimes. So as far as even just making sh- using the justice system as a way to identify criminals, we're not good at it. It's the best we yeah. have and it sucks. And so, for example, eyewitness testimony sucks, and yet it is what yeah. what our justice system is based upon. So, if you're going to use as a metaphor, it's literally a we don't have better than this. The courtroom se- the courtroom setting is unfortunately this is the best okay. we've got because we can't run the courtroom like a science lab because the elements aren't there. So that's the thing. It's not a good metaphor. Yeah. So I, 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 you, okay, you so, can keep so, going that way if you want, Mark, but I'm trying to make you better. <laughs> I appreciate it. No, I'll, I'll go in a different direction. I'll, what about the historical context, right? Like there are people um, who deny historical events took place, whether even I mean, we were just talking, I think um, Nikki just brought up the 9-11 uh, terrorist attack. Mm-hmm. There are conspiracy theories about that about what happened on that day yeah and well mark you know what else is fucked up about that is everything Mm -hmm. that even those of us who aren't truthers still will have elements of that day wrong and there are things about that day that we'll never know certainly there were things that were covered up i'm not saying i'm not a truther 
I think sure. that I think that it was the people Osama bin Laden and his group of merry men conspired and they're they're the ones responsible. But there are going to be people who empowered that to happen. We'll never know about they're going to be tremendous things that we'll never know. So even our best understanding of that day where I go, I know what happened on that day. Even that is an ignorant statement to make. But we exist in a society, we live in certain ways, and I know enough about that day. And so I'll, if someone said what happened on 9-11, I'm going to tell you what I know. At least one or two of the facts that I probably list off won't be completely true. And a lot of facts will be omitted because I won't know them all. So the historical stuff doesn't... Get, right. the, what does ahead, that have Mickey. to do? You, you mentioned that you had scientific evidence or you felt that some element of science demonstrates the existence of a god if, if we have that scientific evidence we don't have to worry about historical standards mm -hmm. well I, i'm just making an analogy because and i do and, I, and i'll present what, what you know what what i think they are but the just the broader point of the broader point i wanted to make was just that in any of these arguments like obviously this no one could put forward a mathematical proof of god's existence so it's it's the evidence is not going to be of that nature it's going to be you know each argument is going to have to stand on its own you know are the premises more likely to be true than not and depending on you know the form of the argument sometimes the conclusion will logically follow if all the premises okay. are true then the con you know the conclusion follows whether you like it or not you know so, so it what's the, what are the premises so let's I, yeah I, let's chat well, about the premises so, okay so okay so if you want to get into the merits the only point i was just trying to make was just that there are so many different arguments and essentially what the atheist has to do or not has to do but i mean if they want to mark i'm going to make you better again no 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 i just mean like i'm going to make you better again mark mean, like, if you don't, if, if, you don't if, want to immediately raise hackles amongst atheists who are like oh it's one of them Drop the phrase, the atheist. You can just atheist. say atheist. Fair the enough. atheist makes me think you're just reading a William Lane Craig <laughs> sketch, uh, uh, the script. Like that's, right. that's when I hear the atheist, his voice comes into mind and I can't get an erection for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, you know, I just, I just, I can't with you. What you're so funny. <laughs> I try. And, um, you know, if, if you're having a debate or just a conversation, you know, and I, I actually try to 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 reach out to people that uh, that that are atheists because I actually like, enjoy it. like most of the atheist friends that I have are like very steeped in science, and, and I'm, I enjoy having these conversations. I'm just saying, like if you know if you get into these conversations, ultimately what ends up happening is that the arguments get um, you know you, you there's pushback on each argument. The only point I just wanted to make was just that there's a cumulative case that's sort of being made. It's almost like all of the arguments have to fail for for theism not, not really. to be true. And also, too, it, it should be both of us, right? Whether you're an atheist or not, we should both bring the same amount of skepticism to any premise, no matter if it's about God or not. So it has yeah. nothing to do with whether or not the person is an atheist or not. But I am very curious to hear what the premises are that you have to present for science demonstrating the existence of God. Okay, so I think from from physics, from a cos cosmology uh, standpoint, um, you have the the cosmological arguments, which I would include. I would include the Kalam, which we talked about. Yep. Then so Kalam fails. The Kalam, Kalam fails because it yeah. doesn't fail because uh, no, it definitely has because you can't demonstrate the premises. The, the The thing isn't. It's not. It's not even a matter of opinion. The Kalam no. could be proven true one day if we reveal things about the universe and science. But right the now... The first premise could be proven true. Right. It, the it, at the moment, the it is invalidated as... Un, you can't use it as proof of anything because it relies on things which haven't been demonstrated. Right. So let's move so, on from the Kalam then, Mark. Let's go okay. to the, the next cosmological okay. argument because that's I not going to stand. Okay, well... We'll agree to disagree on that one. Then I would point. I mean, to we can agree second. to disagree, but you're okay, wrong. Emmanuel. I can tell you why you're wrong, <laughs> and you can't tell me why I am. Well, I, uh, we can, can demonstrate I, uh, why you're one wrong. Let me give a one one sentence snapshot of why I think it, it's correct. The consensus view in cosmology is the Big Bang. It's been verified no. by okay, the cosmic yes, 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 yes. Mark, Mark, I accept the Big Bang. Mean. 
I accept yeah. the Big Bang as it's not even just a the Big Bang. You can you can look through time. You use a telescope and you literally look through time. And you can't go all the way back to the Big Bang because think about yeah, the can. physical space of stuff. That wouldn't make any sense. You'd have to go beyond the horizon mm -hmm. of your sight. However, you can go back billions of years and you can use special telescopes and you can literally see the background radiation that the model of the Big Bang would present. You can see it. So it's not even just a matter of did the Big Bang happen? Exactly. It happened. But the Big Bang, when you then say that is the beginning of the universe, you are speaking in a somewhat colloquial way. Because as far as what beginning means, when you then put right. it into a premise of an argument, it changes entirely. For example, if you want to go with Lawrence Krauss's book and about how there was essentially cosmic vacuum, if cosmic right. vacuum preceded the Big Bang, then some type of this pinhead universe there's still this procession of existence. Or maybe right. not. Maybe there wasn't. And that's where I'm so, saying it falls apart is until we actually know the answer to those questions, you can't rely on the Kalam. The Kalam could be true, but there's not yet good enough reason to believe that it is. And okay. what Jimmy is saying, Mark, is that even though the Big Bang, even Jimmy, or I'm sorry, Mark, real quickly, what Jimmy is saying is even though the Big Bang has been demonstrated to occur, that doesn't mean that the Big Bang isn't a continuation of something that already existed. So that means that until we can demonstrate that Correct. to be so or not, we really can't work with the Kalam as, you know, as you're trying to so, use and it. This is, and this is, no, I, t I totally understand that point. It's a very good point. I think it helps elucidate the argument because what I'm relying on is Alexander mm -hmm. Vilenkin made a presentation uh, mm -hmm. recently within the past five years, I would say. And I want to be very clear on this because whenever I bring this point up, there's always an immediate response that the board goose Vilenkin theorem does not conclude that the universe had a beginning. And that's correct because what, what, what Vilenkin did with Alan Goose and Gord was they came up with their theorem, the, the board goose Vilenkin theorem, and it said that for any universe that is on average in a period of uh, inflation, that that inflationary period had a beginning, right? It did not say the universe had a beginning. However, Blanken gave a presentation where he said because of other factors, other uh, laws, other things that we know from cosmology, when you combine them with the board goose Blanken theorem, it does lead you to the conclusion the universe had a beginning. His, his presentation I, I, was I, titled The Universe Mark, Had Mark, a Beginning. Mark, that's fine. And you know what? He could yeah, be I'll right. It, but it is, I mean, that doesn't mean the God he, exists or has anything to do with it. Even if he, I, I'm, I'm not going to concede. I'm going to say it could be correct, but it isn't still the adopted theory of of existence of a beginning just, of whatever it's it, it's a one that person one. feels strong yeah. also yeah. think of all the the number of scientists i've met who are just positive of string theory and yet there are other scientists that are like yeah, the string theory is fucking stupid and so it's right. when, when you want to bring to us an individual scientist presentation and point to it's sort of like this argument from authority and it feels real good. But what I want, Mark, is you've you've told us that there are these things that science suggest a God. So let's I mm -hmm. think we're just not going to agree on your premise arguments. So so right. And that's why I said I even though it hasn't been demonstrated just for the sake of argument. Sure. The, the universe had whatever had a beginning. Fine. Let's go up with maybe it did. So let's move on to how that results yeah. in. Let's, God existing. Let, I did, let's even give you God exists. I'm willing to Hell, do that yeah, for whatever. an argument. For the sake of this sure. argument, let's say the Kalam does make sense and it's been demonstrated and, it, and now you've gotten to at minimum deism. You can say that a creator exists. Again, I'm not actually conceding this just for the sake of argument because we simply can't right. agree on this and there's a thing that you seemingly can't see. Uh, about why this doesn't, why your arguments don't matter no, to I that. I get thing. your point. I understand uh, what your point is. Well, then you don't accept it, even though the points are well made. Fine. I just look at Fine. it differently. Let's I, just I, go. I, let's just pop ahead of it. Kalam's right. Deism wins okay. at minimum. Deism. You're a Christian. Okay. Why, yes. if a God exists, Mark, are you a Christian? Why Christianity? Well, 
And how does science demonstrate the Christian God exists? That's what I believe you called to show that the science science shows that the Christian God exists. If I'm not, wrong. I, I think he just said existence of a God for science. I don't know if he yeah, defends yeah. scientifically. Right. Scientific. right. Okay. Right. It, exactly. It was just was more the the Christian worldview is based on the life and Christian and, worldview and does not exist. Of Jesus. The Christian worldview does not exist. I'm sorry? Every Christian has the Christian worldview does not actually exist. There are as no, many I Christian worldviews as there are Christians. Let's just so go with yours. Let's, that just means. let's go with yours, Mark. Your Christian worldview. Yeah. Your Christian yeah, worldview. My, my Christian worldview and what I understand that the text and the doctrine of Christianity is based on the life and resurrection of Jesus. Right. Why why okay. pick that? Why think that? Why pick of all um, the because, of all the explanations for God, for example, why not go with a deistic, uncaring, unfeeling, the light world is chaos? Everything is chaotic. Definitely makes sense for why we would have a world like this, why we'd have evolution, why we would have diseases, why we would have evil, why we would have good, why we would have yeah. subjective to our understanding, obviously, as humans. It, 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 every, uh, it, even if you can prove a God exists, mm -hmm. to then prove he has a hand in the world, you have a lot ahead of you because we can basically explain all of existence with few gaps down to the human experience pretty scientifically. And the gaps that do exist are getting smaller and smaller all the time. You certainly can't look at the Bible and say, well, the Bible got so much about existence correct because Christians have had to recede into, well, this was metaphor. When, the, when light showed up before the sun and the stars, that was a metaphor. So it wasn't really describing the Big Bang. It was more describing that it there was a process and it it went in some order, but it doesn't get the order right. So it's just a story. And, you know, we can't go with Adam and Eve because we know that definitely Adam and Eve existing some six to 10,000 years ago, impossible. Homo sapiens have existed for at least 100,000 years. And even if you describe a mitochondrial Eve, this would not be a single unit person isolated from other people existing. In fact, many mitochondrial leaves go. So you can't go with that. So why would you go? Why couldn't you... Adam and Eve, why could Adam and Eve been, existed way before that? Why does it have to be within the past hundred thousand years? Okay. So your, your suggestion is that despite the Bible's timeline being that Adam and Eve lived somewhere between six and 10,000 years ago, uh, that Wait, there is a, a is possibility. No, I like, I like this. I want to, I want to take it. Uh, <laughs> Your suggestion is that prior to, let's say, 100,000 years ago or 250,000 years ago, Adam and Eve could have been, what, a pair of Homo erectus, a pair of Homo habilis, a pair of uh, 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 Australopithecus africanus? Uh, which which, which I, species do you think Adam and Eve were? Because the Bible seems to indicate they were humans, which are Homo sapiens, and Homo sapiens correct. have lived somewhere between 100,000 and 250,000 years ago. So when is it that you think there were only two Homo sapiens who had no parents when there's no indication of that at all? Well, there had to, there had, there had to have been an original at some point. Incorrect. Like the species. Nope. Huh? No. There's, no? You cannot point to a single set as the beginning. These things happen as a gradient. It, it's, it's, it's actually tremendously fun, and it's a beautiful thing to learn in biology, but it's also extremely frustrating. And Mark, I won't, yeah. I won't, I'm not going to talk down to you for this because there's not a reason if you haven't studied this that you should know this. But when it comes to classifying species, it doesn't happen at one moment. It's sort of a somewhere between, this is like I said, Homo sapiens have existed somewhere between 100,000 and 250,000 years. And that's because right. there are qualities of Homo sapiens in the fossil record that are pretty sapien like 250,000 years ago. And then there are ones that clearly are 100,000. So somewhere between that 250 mark and that 100,000 mark, the clear distinction between Homo sapien and Homo erectus occurs. It is not with a singular couple. It doesn't happen at one moment. And you could even potentially find a fossil where you go flip a coin and this is Homo erectus or it's Homo sapien. That's, that's unfortunately, uh, if you found something with just enough, just too little enough information. Now, in that scenario, I think actually scientists, if it was that confusing, 
potentially would reclassify it as a new intermediate species, whether that's correct or not to do, right. whether that we should add something between erectus and sapien. I wouldn't encourage, but nobody's calling me to make these decisions. So far, they haven't done it. Sure. So there is no first homo sapiens whose parents were but, homo but, erectus. But I, I, don't, I, I, I don't understand what you mean by there. there had, if you have, a, the, if you have the, the, the whole concept of a species is that yeah. at some, even if it happens at, on a gradient mm -hmm. basis, right? It's not like all of a sudden like- No, I, 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 I can answer like this for you. Are you familiar with the color scale, uh, like a color circle? Uh, what is it called? The color disc? It's a circle yeah. that represents all the colors. Okay, and you know we could isolate down and we could t turn that into a bar. And on one side of the bar, you would have pink. And on the other side, you have red. And there's an entire gradient between it, right? And when you get to red, that's red. For sure, that's red. Mm -hmm. And when you get to pink, that's pink. Right. For sure, that's pink. There's this middle area that you don't really have a good way to say, by the way, at this pixel at this individual color, at this individual hex code. In fact, you almost can do it when it's digital because digitally you could say, all right, well, let's just go 50.1 and you could pick one pixel, yeah. except for that that's an illusion. It's not really there. There is still a gradient between each color and each color and each color. And if I were to just start showing you cards, it gets even harder. Because even when you are 75% toward red, you still have 25% of the qualities of pink in it. So you can't say it's red because red you only really know when you get to there. You would say that it's like red, it'd be red dash red pink if you're 75% of the way there. That's, right. that's what you would say it is. It's not just, so it's the same way. Or you could do it with language. When did the first Latin speaking mother give birth to a Spanish speaking baby? It doesn't happen that way. It happens in communities. It happens as a gradient and there is no perfect uh, answer. And somewhere in these intermediate ranges, you could still have the argument, more homo erectus versus homo sapien. Right. And this is why when you talk about an Eve, the people... Theists get so stoked when they hear about mitochondrial Eve. The thing that bums them the fuck out is that it turns out mitochondrial, there's tons of them, mitochondrial Eves. And in fact, there will be today mm -hmm. people living that if humanity survives another several thousand years will be mitochondrial Eves of the future. There are, there will be more mitochondrial Eves. It's tr a That's tremendous true. thing. And, and even still though, I mean, there's, the Bible is one cosmogonic account of how the world potentially began. There are other as well. What does that have to do with the existence of the Christian God? Well, I think he was trying to defend that Adam and Eve could have happened, that he doesn't have to let go of that story. And the Catholic, I know you're not Catholic, yeah. the Catholic Church has let go of Adam and Eve. And if they're willing to let it go of it, you got to think yeah, about it. Are. Because the science and, and is too also, overwhelming. Well, it's a spin off. But it, yeah, but even if Adam and Eve did potentially exist and they did get that account right, what right. does that have to do with the Christian God? No, no, nothing. I mean, it's just because it's, it's I, yeah, I think Jamie brought it up because yeah, I, it's, I, like, I it's, it's something that's a claim to in the Bible. And, um, you know, okay. ultimately. The Bible makes quite a few claims and so do other. So if, if, if Islam, if the, if the Quran made a claim um, about nature that was correct, does that validate all as a existence no it doesn't it doesn't you have to you know there could there could be things in these religious i mean but it would, i mean i'll give you it would be tremendous if we proved adam and eve that'd be tremendous and and at a certain point i would go okay the first thing i'm going to go investigate now is is judaism true because they're yeah, you know or, they're sort of the origin for that it's, it was a it was a another um the, Mesopotamian other text. versions of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah that have that it was yeah. actually spin off of the, the, Bi oh, the bible is correct. the bible is plagiarized but the, you know we, we'll pretend Evelyn. that's not the oh. case for mark here mark <laughs> let's go back to the original question why christianity of all the things you could choose including a deistic yeah. god an uncaring god why christianity so i mean to pers i have a subjective reason which is like i I find like the story of Jesus, what he stood for as something that, that resonates with me just because he was somebody like I think was um, enlightened in some sense, like in the same way, maybe as like Martin Luther King or like Gandhi or some of these other historical figures. So he stood for 
what he stood for, as opposed to some other religious uh, historical people, whether they really existed or not, um, I, I, it's very hard to knock like the story of Jesus sure. because he really stood for. I get what you're saying, you know, Mark. Good. In the- My follow-up question then for me is one: in your religious belief, personally, if I don't believe in Jesus and God, do I go to hell? Um, I, you know, I think the reason the Christian doctrine is set up that way is because I, ultimately... Mark, just give me the, the yes point, or no guy. Come on. You know better than that. Well, Do I go my to... My interpretation of it is yeah. that yes, that you would, you would, you would, you would at least not go to heaven. I think, yeah, I think... You know what's crazy is to me, you've yeah. just demonstrated yourself to be a more compassionate person than the God you believe in. Because you told exactly. me that what was important to you is the subjective experience of how drawn you are to a person like Jesus who advocates for the kinds of things that Jesus advocates for. So rather than, what if I live my life, let's say I become Bernie Sanders and basically live, okay, I'm just kidding about Bernie because you might not agree with him, but <laughs> if, I, if I live like Jesus and I stand for the same things Jesus stands for, which I admittedly I don't, I think a lot of his philosophies He's given credit for a lot of stuff that people don't even realize aren't his. But if I love my neighbor, if I treat other people like I have be treated, if I bring poor people in, if I bring in, if I take care of the sick, if I love everyone I can, if I try to do good for humanity uh, and the sorts of ways that people envision this Christ, none of that matters. And I still get tortured by this loving God character who is entangled in some way with this Christ character if I just don't believe in him, even if I live that good life. So, all right. Number if, one, I'm not, I, I haven't studied like all the tenants, like extremely, you know, like I'm, I'm actually, I used to. I, you should, if you're going to say you believe it, but. You really, you really need to do I, that, Mark. What, what I mean is like, I, in other words, like, I'm not sure why, if, if you're already granting that like God exists and then it, we, we have, I mean, yeah, I could come up with, like, my own religion, but, like, essentially, they're, like, the major religions of the world. And if, you, if you're if you of the view that God exists, I mean, you kind of almost, like, de facto end up, like, going in a particular direction towards one of those I, I, I totally disagree. Religions. I totally disagree with you, Mark. Uh, okay, if you want to say culturally, that's what culture is reinforced, sure. But that started somewhere. And I think if prior— to that starting somewhere, some you could say it's hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, depending on where you want to begin. If we had started with the scientific method instead, which I don't think anybody who calls into the show could argue doesn't at the very least get you medicine and flying planes and smartphones and all the technology <laughs> we're using to talk, clearly it works. It's The fruits yeah. are in its labor. If we had started with that prior to interested parties, everyone but your religions, uh, interested parties, uh, uh, that was a little tease there, but interested parties uh, uh, doing it for self-gain and, and, and to be able to not just have community but also control communities, I don't think the default would be, oh, I now have to, you've proved God's true, who do I worship? Because I, 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 I don't think that's the default. If you were to prove God is true tomorrow, to me, using one of these premise things or some scientific thing, I would still say then he doesn't give a fuck about us because the evidence of a caring God is simply not there. I would default to deism because with evidence, deism is as far of a God. Deism is as far as you can go with the world in its current state. That's how I, that's what I think. Unless you have some praise. Even if the Christian God was demonstrated to exist, I would not worship it. I would no longer be an atheist as it's been demonstrated to exist. I might, I'm a coward. I, you know, I, <laughs> I certainly would not. I don't want to burn Unless in hell for like, eternity. I know. I also don't want to sing songs. It depends on the hell. Am I burning it. for I'll eternity? Am I? If they prove that I'm getting tortured, I'll act as a coward. Torture sucks. Uh, I've, I, it's, I've not had it a ton of times, yeah. but it's happened in my life, and it's not great. Don't, oh, don't, okay. don't have like, just, don't just torture? have brothers. I got waterboarded like, by my, one of my brothers once. Anyway, 
Um, no, not kidding. <laughs> very similar to waterboarding. It was terrible, <laughs> terrible experience. Yeah. Anyway, don't have don't. I don't actually have just brothers. Don't have a ton of brothers and a terrible family because these sorts of things happen. Anyway, no um, brothers are very good at that. Yeah. yeah fucking worse. I, 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 I everybody's a psychopath before they're seventeen years old. It's just like true. that's true. And and then even many people for years after. But uh, the. <laughs> The whole point of it being, but, I, I, if you proved the Christian God and that was what was waiting on me on this side, I'd, you know, I'd act out of cowardice. I'd, I'd rather sing songs for eternity than get tortured forever. Torture forever is not a, not something I'm down for. No, but I don't think it is torture. I don't think it is supposed to be like a fire and brimstone type. Uh, I don't think hell is supposed to be that. Under Mark, the if I'm doctrine, just going where all the fornicators are going, sign me up for hell. I'm down for it. <laughs> that's yeah, that's fine. If we all get a, you know, it could be a good time down there. Fuck yeah, I'm down. Yeah, no, but I, I think it's <laughs> Mark. What I but what I actually want to do here, I, I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to let you have some last words. I think we've given you a lot to think about and consider, and I'd like to let it sit with you because there's been so much, and we're 30 minutes in, and I want to I want to fly through yeah. these these last calls here. So go ahead and give your last thought here, uh, and, right. and, and then we'll we'll move on. Yeah, no, you did, and I appreciate that because I will. I, that's actually exactly what I do after these conversations. Is I kind of introspectively and try to go out and try to make sense of uh, either something I can't answer or something that doesn't seem right to me. <clears throat> I was just going to say, like, I, I don't think um, the I don't think the the concept of hell is is supposed to be torture. I think it's just it's sort of like separation from God, sure. and not reunified. Isolation. Know, with him. And I don't, I you know, I don't know if that changes the the earlier question that you asked about, like you know, why it needs to be the case that if you don't believe, like, why you should be sort of damned to that. Um, I, just no, not really. I, I get what you're saying, no, Mark. Exactly, I'm, exactly. I'm relieved that you as a person are clearly better than the God you believe in. Uh, and I'm, and, I'm and I'll, leave you, well. I'll leave you with that, Mark. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to talking again in the future. And, and now that I'm, oh, cool, n- my brain will associate this conversation when I see you in the chat and I will be less mean when I try and goad you into <laughs> <Yeah>. calling. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice talking to you guys. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you, man. All right, later. Mark, yeah, later. Bye, Nikki. <sighs> Bye. So I'm updating things. And that, yeah, that was like, that was, that was a tremendous call, if you ask me. I think that yeah. was, that was very good. Mark's a good guy. I yeah. think what I'm going to do is. I still is, would like to hear the, the scientific premises that lead to the existence of God, though. I, I think his suggestion was, and to tell you the truth, in my opinion, is that that still is a God of the gaps and using basically like, what's convenient versus what's actually demonstrated, but that his <laughs> idea was that current things about science suggest the Kalam is is accurate and shit like that. But maybe not, and we'll talk more about him with him in the future, but uh, yeah, sure. I don't know. I, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take, we've got three lines, two of them are atheists, and one of them's a theist. Uh, we've got 24 minutes left, and then it'll have been two hours, but we still have the super chats to do. So atheist calls, we're going to do very quickly, and then we're going to try and limit the theist call to about 10 minutes or so. And then when we're done, we will read any super chat of $5 or more. If you like this show, Hostility, the thing you have to understand is it's not going to be the most watched show on this channel because we're often going to be bringing people that no one's ever heard of. I hope that changes. I hope that that because this is introducing you to people like Nikki is... I, I think I could do just this show and I'd be excited to just introduce you to people that I like and that then I want to pr- like brag are my friends. It's totally a, <laughs> like, look who I'm friends with. It's an ego thing. C- tremendous narcissism over here. Uh, uh, I, and so, I, but I love this show. And if you like that and you like the show where we're trying to introduce it, support this show. That would be an important thing. So if you have a question or something, throw a $5 or above super chat. And then you can also support the channel in general over on Patreon or becoming a channel member. That's really key to being able to keep experimental shows like this going Thursday after Thursday after Thursday after Thursday. Uh, or Tuesdays. These are Tuesdays. It's not even Thursday. Thursdays <laughs> is the transatlantic call-in show. The fuck am I thinking? What am I doing here? Uh, yes. Do that. Support the show. Send your super chats and that that's what makes it all. Uh, so that'll be the end of the show. So we got two atheists and then a theist call and we're going to do them. Uh, this one looks like it'll probably uh, be quickish, I think. We are talking to Kita in Utah. My condolences for living in Utah. Uh, Kita... <laughs> 
Kita, you are on the line. Hi. Hello. How are you guys? It's so nice Hi. to be uh, able to ta- chat with you. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. Thank you. Give it to us. What did you want to talk about? Yeah. So um, I grew up um, in Utah. I'm black. And um, I just, a few years ago, uh, figured out it's all bullshit. <laughs> and, yeah, you, um, were you Mormon? That, Mormon or Christian yeah, in yeah, Utah? Yeah, I was Mormon. <laughs> oh, Kita. Oh, Ooh. Yeah, Kita, that out, and that's great. That's great. You're invited yeah. to be my friend because <laughs> I need more. I need more ex Mormon community in my life. I really do. Uh, and and to tell you the truth, one of the perspectives I don't get to hear a lot are from Black ex Mormons. Uh, it's just yeah. not. It's not. Which it's rare. part of that's because Black Mormons are rare, and that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah. but. <laughs> They do exist, and those are perspectives we could certainly hear. So DM me on Twitter or something, and we'll be buds. Platonic buds, Same. don't try and fall in love with me. Okay? That is so funny. <laughs> don't you can do it. DM me as well, Ida, if you'd like There's to. No I don't know if you're on that. Twitter. I, but uh, I, I'm gay, so we're good. Excellent. <laughs> oh, Excellent. hello. <laughs> Tired of people just <laughs> pretending they want to be my friend. <laughs> No, she can be. She can be my friend, though. I'm okay with that. I'll be your friend for sure. <laughs> anyway, Kita, okay, this yeah. has gone off the rails. Kita, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, but um, I just wanted to uh, say or uh, just ask about um, having more uh, black atheist faces because you know, um, obviously. Being black and ex-Mormon, there's not a lot of us. But then you look at the wider black atheist community and, like, there's not a lot there either. And, you know, it's, it's kind of isolating. And I know how big of a um, a cultural thing church is for black people. And it's just, it's really hard to, you know, yeah. find community of, of black atheists. There's not a lot of us. And I, my main question was just like, are there concrete things we can do to create more inclusive spaces or make more existing spaces more inclusive? That's a good oh, question. Absolutely. I'd almost, I, I would Should almost be. ask you, Nikki, do you think which one, if you had to prioritize one, which would you prioritize? Creating spaces uh, optimize specifically like organizations and stuff. I know there's some out there like black non-believers and others, uh, but like a specific atheist for black people space, or would you say it would be a better priority to take current atheist spaces and try to make them more diverse? If you had to pick one, both are obviously true. You should do both, but which one, which one do you think would have the higher priority? We're, we definitely are doing that That with the uh, local community we're doing down here in Austin. We're trying to make sure it's as diverse a group and welcoming a group as possible. One of the things that we actually like select for question-wise is specifically queer acceptance. Uh, it's We basically, it's like, hey, here's a group for skeptics, humanists, uh, and, and atheists. And if you're a homophobe or a transphobe, fuck right off. This is not the group for you. We are excluding you, you asshole. <laughs> right. So, what with with that being said, I would uh, av- I would advocate for starting a exclusively Black atheist um, group, if you are able to do so. Um, if you are in an area of Utah that's a little more populated, there is a site called Meetup, and you should be able to um, start a group there and try to um, market it if you can to to attract some people. And you can do that through using the other atheist groups because. Um, black atheists are going to naturally gravitate towards atheist groups as a whole because there aren't a lot of spaces where they can express themselves. So you could use those spaces mm-hmm. to reach out to other black atheists. If you are not comfortable meeting face to face with others and, 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 you know, being a black atheist is very taboo and very stigmatized. So some people may not be comfortable meeting in person. There's always the option of starting an online group as well. Uh, you could use Discord or you could use, um, of course, Twitter as um, they have Twitter talk spaces. But you are right. It is very rare, especially in the Mormon church. That's extremely rare. Um, but you are a stellar example that other people can see and use um, as hope for leaving religion. And there are more black atheists um, coming out every year. Of course, we're lagging behind. 
um, as we don't necessarily have access to all of the resources necessary to really spur a lot of critical thought in the scientific and philosophical arenas. But mm -hmm. you could be a pioneer for that um, through any of those avenues. I think there's something that's interesting that it, it's it's more a thing that ex-Mormons, I think, can understand with as far as black community stuff surrounding their church goes. And so to have Keaton, who's an ex-Mormon black person, is amazing. But it's why I add, I'm, I'm starting to lean toward this idea that we need some more literal replacements for church. Because growing up mm. Mormon, and then I know you'll have seen this in the South, growing up black in the South especially, it's not just a matter of the churches are important. It's the center of your community in a lot of places. It is. Like as far as Especially my African American community. Relating to my yeah. career, relating to my friends, relating to my, you know, my car broke down, which mechanic am I gonna use? My I mean, down right. to like everything. Where am I getting my hair cut? Where am I? You're going to church and you're having this network and it directs your career, it directs your family life, it directs everything and i've i've speaking to a lot of black atheists have seen that there's a lot of it, it, it's it's eerily similar uh, a sort of that that one specific thing you can't say mormons have a lot else in common with black people they try <laughs> not to it almost seems but that specific like sense of where you have this centralizing thing and i'm not saying have a worship alternative but i mm, i'm advocating yeah. more and more for if i had the resources to do it I would start something that you can almost colloquially call a secular church or an atheist church here of a place where people can go. And then one of the things that there's not a good replacement for when you leave religion is a place that you go regularly and hear messages of redemption. That's something mm, only you get right. Like at church, they're going to take your money and say, you're redeemed because you gave us the money. They're not, they don't actually give a shit if you actually become a better person, maybe a better Mormon, but you still get to go and have those, like take those feelings of heaviness and shame and, and, and things and say, I just want forgiveness for, for this and they'll give it to you on behalf of people. They don't have the right to give it to you for, but they'll give it to you. Something that replaces that with something healthy where you have this, again, a regular community, you've got a sense of ritual, not literal, like, you know, do this and then spin Prayer in a circle and, and then do that dance ritual. But like a, <laughs> like a, on most Sundays, I go do this thing. Um, and then to have uplifting messages, like just to like have instead of sermons, basically little mini Ted talks on cognitive behavioral therapy would mm, fucking like awesome. improve so many people's lives. And then, uh, but unfortunately mm. there's no way to fund this because as soon as people leave religion and you go, Hey, Here's the thing. We'd like to replace church and we've got this great idea. We also need your money for it. And then people are like, whoa, wait, whoa, wait, that's, yeah, that, that's true. Is it 10% right. you need? Cause no. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's, that's what, that's some just thoughts I had on the whole community central thing. Uh, Kita, did you have any other question or comment before we, we let you go here? Yeah. Did we give you some good ideas to um, maybe consider? Yeah, no, uh, that's a lot of great ideas. I think it's, um, <laughs> yeah, like you said, it's, it's like really hard to to find people. Um, but um, I like those ideas of like meetups and maybe Discord, starting online, stuff yeah. like that. So I guess yeah. we'll we'll see where we can take it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, oh, yeah, and if you're if you were on Twitter, are you on Twitter, Kita? I sure. just left. <laughs> You just oh, left because okay. ah, okay. of the Elon of it all. We're both on Instagram, yeah. too. We are. On Instagram? I need to use Instagram more. Um, yeah, I need to ugh, I need to use it more. But um, I don't know if there's a Black Dawn Believers chapter in Utah. I don't know where you are. Um, but um, if seen, you I want... I haven't really seen anything. Okay. Yeah, Utah is a, a little bit, I guess, Tough. not very diverse. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yeah. Um, But yeah, if you... Um, yeah, follow both of us on Instagram. If I um, ever get back on Instagram, well, if you shoot me a DM, DM, I will try to find people out your way. Um, I know a lot of people in the community, maybe Jenna or Cynthia, um, may know someone. Uh, they're both really great. Um, and uh, yeah, but yeah, just connect with 
with both of us and I will connect you with Jenna, connect you with Cynthia, connect you with some other people in the community. Oh yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You guys have a great rest of your evening. Sure. You're welcome. Bye Akita. Bye. Bye. My favorite call of the night, but I always love talking about Mormonism. If we had way more time, <laughs> I'd be asking Kita about like, so tell me about the first time you said fuck after you weren't a member anymore. Because <laughs> you're not allowed to say fuck. You're not allowed to swear. During like, tell me about the member. first time he, he, you had coffee. Let's talk about it. That's, <laughs> how, That's so funny you, to me. <laughs> did you like tea? A lot of people don't like tea at tea. first, and then they grow to love it uh, when they leave. <laughs> That's so All right. weird. It's such a weird thing to care about. Caffeine. I, mm. I know. I know. All right. Well, uh, Dave in Maryland, we do have to make this one quicker because we still have the last Thea's call. So Dave in Maryland, you're on the line. Dave, what was your uh, question? Oh, this one will be easy. Uh, yeah, you kind of already answered it. So Yeah. Yeah. You, you were going to ask what our views on secularized religion, such as Unitarian Universalism and such. Oh, sure. Yeah, there's a few others. Uh, one of them is um, religious humanism, and the other is religious naturalism. I don't know if you've heard of that. I, I have. So my main criticisms of that is I would avoid terms like, I know that they're using it sort of tongue-in-cheek, but you're going to turn off a lot of people with any organism that organism organization that has <laughs> the word religious in it. Uh, religion specifically meaning to be a, not just a... It, it's almost participating in conflation that atheists are constantly having to battle against because religion does not mean your moral system. Religion is your right. system of worship. Who do you worship? That's your religion. Right. I worship you. nobody. I worship, yeah, worship dad ass, and that's it. And whose ass is myself. it? I'm not even going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. It's the only thing I worship. <laughs> But no, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I'm very reluctant to use, and that's why I said, even when I was talking about my thing, you know, colloquially, you could call it a secular church, because even that word is mm, nasty. But, a lot of implications, yeah. But if you call it a community center, you're guaranteed no one's going to give you any money to run it. So <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> that just sounds free altogether, community center. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're like... No, I don't want to buy paper towels for the boys and girls club or whatever they think. I was going to say, you don't need tissue. You don't need air, or, you know, lights, air I'm conditioning. Not, you don't need that stuff. I'm not here to support the <laughs> YMCA. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Dave, any, uh, any follow up or comment or question before we uh, take that last theist call here? Yeah, one quick follow up. Um, Nikki, is that your name? Mm hmm. So I don't know if you're familiar with the traditions of this uh call-in show but uh fuck you jimmy <laughs> bye that's that's no. tomorrow's <laughs> show that's not the tradition of this show that just hurt my feelings <laughs> he's, he's talking about on wednesdays they do a show called the hang up it's matt dillahunty's show because oh, he's yeah. known for hanging up and so one of the little yeah, jokey that's... things they'll do is they'll hang the the callers will hang up on matt that's not the tradition here i'm just hurt uh <laughs> but anyway that's funny. i i, I like get it was, it was done and good fun uh all right sure. do you are you good it, we're, we're nine minutes to the hour we can okay you're good 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 i'll go as late as i have to go but if at any point you have to go oh, definitely sure. uh we're talking no, to I'm, I'm enjoying this um, cool so i'm ready to we're talking yep. to Amir in Virginia. Uh, that's not the correct banner, is it? Do I need to fix it? I think I do. Uh, I'll fix no, that no, while you no. tell us what you're calling in for. Uh, I'm calling in uh, primarily to ask a question to Nikki because she made a claim a few days ago on Twitter that Christmas is pagan, but I didn't really see any justification for that claim. Uh, what... What is your evidence and justification for that claim actually being true? So thank you, by the way, <laughs> for actually calling in to speak with me. So I believe I probably should have reworded the tweet. And I actually did put a follow up tweet indicating that there are pagan rituals that Christ uh, excuse me, that Christmas uses, such as the mistletoe, um, Pine tree, tree in the house. Or singing. Yeah, those yeah. that's what I was referring to. And I, I did 
add that follow-up tweet hoping to clarify. Uh, okay. Uh, in regards to the mistletoe tree and singing, um, what um, primary data from that time period uh, actually supports that? Uh, particularly in... All right, well, let me, uh, let me uh, jump in here because I'm not saying that you don't deserve an answer to your question. It's not really the style of the show to go, hey, uh, we're going to take callers and every single topic we're engaged on, we're going to be ready to cite our sources on. This is very much a two people jump in together, jump in together. So it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, thank you for not just leaving this on Twitter, but also you might have to wait for your response on Twitter. That said, there are lots of sources out there that suggest that not only is Christmas done on Christmas it's not, it's not a coincidence that it's happening then. It was actually to like override pagan rituals in these pagan areas rituals, where right. pagans were being converted to Christianity. And by the way, that's fine to me. Like as far as culturally, right. it, that's not yeah. actually the evil. If these people, now the evil was where they were killing all the pagans. But if you were to say yeah. like, if you're talking about your now Christian Let's say these people all consented to now being Christian who were previously pagan. That's not quite what happened. But as far as just the idea of going like, we're going to be inclusive by making one of our uh, uh, holidays that's important. Basically, we're going to combine our routines combine. together and do this together. That would be a beautiful thing. Not really exactly sure. what happened, but on the, on, the, on the face of it, you could defend it there's plenty of sources though it's not it, it, as far as historically will, goes you can either wait sure. or just google it and you'll find tons of them and that's um, what i would say to do but i would if you'd like a direct source one that i have read recently is um the faith instinct by nicholas wade um is one of the sources that i use to get that information of course there are you know you could just google various you know yeah. things as well and but, people did post some google excerpts, but I would specifically point you just from my recent studies, I would specifically point you towards that text. Um, can you give me like a summarization of what exactly his claim is and what's the background data that supports it? Or uh, do you just want, or are you not exactly mm -hmm. familiar with what exactly it is? Okay, so <laughs> the book is on the shelf, but in the uh, latter part of the book, he is talking about the Christmas rituals and kind of how the uh, Christmas religion, or excuse me, the Christian, excuse me about that, how the Christmas holiday um, came to be. And he was talking about the pagan influences that the church was trying to use to win pagans over. And he does have a whole list of sources in the back of the book. I, I don't know anyone who just can name sources off the top of their head but i would like to point you i can point you directly towards that book and if you would like to jump in that yourself and see kind of what i'm speaking about it is towards the latter part of the book if that helps you kind of find the paragraph or the the page in which this information is provided but he does have his sources numbered so you can definitely go to the the end of the book and find out which sources he's using but i can tell you where i found the information and I can tell you that um, that Nicholas well, Wade he, has been cited by others, but I, I don't really see the need to go through a whole list of sources. Uh, yeah, you, you, you don't have to do that here on the show. You could possibly maybe do that, say, maybe uh, later on Twitter, if and when you have the time. Hey, Amir, um, let me ask you this question. What, what's important to you? And I want you to answer honestly. What's important sure. to you, whether or not it is true that pagan rituals are a part of the current Christian tradition or mm -hmm. whether or not you feel Nikki has done enough research to satisfy you to make that mm -hmm. statement. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm just the way you're asking, I'm very curious about your motivations here. Uh, well, to be, uh, well, I'm not, not. I'm not really sure what my motivations have any relevance to it, mm. but just. Oh, but just they're, they're very relevant, actually. Well, 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 then let me just go ahead and show it. The claim Christmas is pagan is a propositional statement, and that propositional I did, I did statement. Did clarify that. Uh, proposition I did clarify is that. a. Uh, basically, particularly Christmas 
they, as in December 25th, is pagan, like yep, in regards to true. Christian practice, et cetera. Uh, basically, that's a proposition, and it has content that is to be believed. And like any proposition, it has to have uh, ba- um, it has to have justification for it to be believed. Right. And so what I'm asking and, you, Amir, is do you want to know whether or not it is true the pagan the pagan Christmas crossover, or do you are you interested in finding out whether or not Nikki is justified to your level of satisfaction? So, for example, let's just do this question, Amir. Let's say Nikki true. doesn't post a single source. Are you going to still go research it and find out if it's true or not? Mm, of course. Why wouldn't Good. I? Great. I mean, Great. I'm glad. Because, I'm I, glad. You're saying your curiosity is with the information. Nikki may or may not. I don't really, I, I don't waste my time. I'm happy I'm to public, give us. I mean, I recently read this source. I'm happy to give it. I, as your channel takes off and you're doing more, you will simply not have the time in the future. So this time maybe I, you will. And you're, I mean, you're, right. Yeah. You, you already shared well, there's everything. There's one source, Nicholas Wade, yeah. the faith, faith Institute. Just follow up with it. Yeah. And then, and then that book has all of its sourcing in it and everything. It, it does. Just, He's very it, thorough. It, it, yeah. it seems. It just seems like there's a little bit of a, a little bit of an air. I just hear a little bit of an air of this sort of uh, almost arrogant. Like, prove to me that your language was responsible the other day. It feels a little bit like that's what's happening here, Amir. Maybe I'm misreading and it. I Maybe it's your deep baritone, tweet. dulcet tones. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. uh, Jimmy, maybe I'm wrong. Jimmy, I don't mean to interrupt. I did but clarify that it, as well. Sure. Yeah, Jimmy, forgive me if I interrupt, but uh, yeah, it just seems like you're kind of reading too much into what I was actually into my question. It wasn't necessarily anything malicious. It was just clarifying, okay, um, I've heard this claim and I see, uh, particularly Nikki, I, I've heard this claim before and I see you sp- yep. uh, Thing it, um, but what 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 is your epistemology behind it? See, this what is where I'm, I'm saying. This is where I'm saying your I, question I, I doesn't already, sound already honest. Gave that too. Yeah, and this... I did give that, and, and also in fairness, because I did see the comments, and even some atheists were like, "Hey, just maybe clarify a bit." So, in fairness, I did follow up with a tweet that said, "Chris, uh, ugh, I keep conflating to Christmas um, engages in certain pagan rituals and." That's what I mean, that some of the practices of Christmas are pagan. Mm -hmm. And I did specify that. And I'm going to give this one source, if you'd like, which is Nicholas Wade, his book, The Faith Instinct, and that and his evidence um, has been supported by others as well. Now, I'm not going to give specific individuals who've supported it, but I, I, I was of the understanding as well that this is general. This is general knowledge. Um, Did you this isn't uncommon knowledge? Yeah, I'm a little surprised to be honest. Did you, did you were you not aware of that before, Amir? Or? Uh, um, well, in regards to uh, well, the, well, just to give an example, like, um, are you talking about Saturnalia in particular? Uh, just, see, just, see, Amir, you're you're not even answering the questions yeah, that you're being asked. So what we're gonna do is wrap up this call, and I'm gonna give you great news, Amir. Shut up, Amir. Shut up. Hey, great. Shut up. Uh, I muted you. Deal with it. Uh, Amir, I have tremendous news for you. Tremendous. It's the best news in the world, better than the Christmas story. If you type in Christmas pagan origins, you can click I'm feeling lucky on Google, and it's going to take you to a perfectly great place to start. So good night, Amir. Have a good one. Answer the calls you're actually, answer the questions you're actually asked, and stop pretending like, you're not here trying to 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 sort of purity check another person and see if oh you didn't blah, 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 blah. Uh, call again another time when you want to you want to engage a little bit more honestly and I know what you're wondering is he going to unmute me before he hangs up nope just just follow I mean in the source that I've been willing to give just follow that as well yeah. um just it's a great book. It, it took longer for me to read than I wanted, but it's a, it's a really good book. So follow his information, just follow the information that he gives and others as well. It's not really that hard to, even my sister yeah. who is just like a Bible believing evangelical glossolalia practicing Christian. She's even like, yeah, th- these are pagan rituals people to be know. engaging, but we do stuff for culture. Yeah. I, I don't, it's kind of odd. Are, but, pe- people are aware it's, it, yeah, it's not, it really isn't that tough, but the, the, it, look, yeah. It became even more uh, uh, more obvious as soon as he said the word epistemology, epistemology. which I'm not saying every time a person <laughs> says that, but as things were going that way and then the motivations there weren't to try and it was a clear attempt. This person has a problem with you 
and wants to anybody he thinks might have you on a pedestal. He wants to see if he can take you down a peg by saying, it's not a matter of whether or not she was right. It's a matter of not of whether she had a good reason for being right. Essentially you do. And again, it's common information. Yeah. Yeah. This is just a, this is just a person being sort of an asshole. So try again in the future, Amir. I look forward to talking to you. I hope it goes better next time. What I would do is, before, as you dial the phone, you go, all right, I'm going to call them. <sighs> I'm ready. You know what? I'm going to just be <laughs> honest. I'm just going to tell the truth, and I'm just going to answer the questions they ask. Okay, now I am ready. That's how to make that call, Amir. Amir And there asshole. are other people who Sorry. did put <laughs> your so funny. There are other people, just put my information aside. If you don't want to read Nicholas Wade's book or follow up on his resources, there are other people who did post resources in yep. um, the thread, it's a pretty extensive thread. So there's a lot of information available, even if I myself am not willing to really put a whole dissertation. I've just done this it. long enough that it's really funny because there are also times where I'll take a call and I'll go, oh, are you doing X? And they're like, no, I'm not doing X. And I'm like, I don't know. Okay, I You're was wrong. You're reading too much into it, Jimmy. I, I was, don't know why. I was but. wrong. My bad. I'm sorry that with my years of practice at this now, and not just years of practicing as host, but also listening to calls for years prior, I'm sorry sure. I made that brash presumption. I'm sorry. Please proceed. And then they go, cool. I'm here to do X. Epistemologically. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. it. That thing I just said I'm not doing, I'm doing it. <laughs> Fuck you. Right. Uh, all right. right. This, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. Keep going. No, there's, there's, he can, you know, he can find the information if he'd like to. He can do a couple other things too, if you ask me. Uh, like, fuck off. All right, this is the portion. Again, if you want to support the show, send a super chat. Anything $5 or more we'll read and respond to. And it is great to support the shows that you love the most and more th types of shows that you want to see. If you want to see uh, uh, Alyssa back, if you want to see Nikki back, those are the two people who have done hostility so far. Uh, the, you know, this is the show to super chat. Fuck all those other shows. All of them are to know. I'm to back. I'm the executive so producer of all of the shows. So in reality, I want you to support all of them. But this I this specific show is a little bit my favorite. And there's only been two episodes because it's been so <laughs> our, our our last one was with a sex coach uh, from New York oh, dope. named Alyssa. Yeah, she's oh, cool. she's amazing. She's the best. I'm, I'm excited to re release the clips with her because she's just I love you both so fucking much. All right, let's do the super chats. We have $5 from Heathen Queen who said, I just saw Nikki. You've been following me. I'm so sorry. It's taking me this long. Keep it up. I think that that means Thank Heathen you. Queen has followed you back. Excellent. Thoughts. Thanks so much. I will tell people also, we only have a few super chats right now. So do get them in the $5 or more because if we run out, the show ends when we, when we run out, the show ends. Of course, Nikki, if you have to go at any point, definitely do. And I'll, I'll stay as long as there's things to read, but Right now, there's only a couple, which tells me that okay. nobody wants any more of these episodes. <laughs> uh, 10 Australian dollars from Stairway to Oblivion. As a cradle atheist, stories like this are so sad. I think that must have been the, that would have come in maybe while we were talking to Emmanuel, right? Red Sea, maybe? I don't know. I As don't a know. cradle atheist? Yeah, like a born atheist. A person oh, who is, lucky you. I know. I'm just like, it's on. It's funny because I've even done shows and stuff with people who were born atheists. And it's on the one hand, I'm so jealous. But on the other hand, I'm like, you have zero street cred. You, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I, we're straight from the street, Jimmy. That's, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Like fucking... <laughs> I get what wow. you're advocating for and your arguments are correct, but there's this lack of you weren't abused the way I was you abused. That's just knocking no. me over the head. Tremendous. Just I mean, a Mormon and an evangelical. That's as pretty hardcore as it can get in a lot of ways. So we are indeed. It. We are under. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, somewhat of an evangelical Mormon, I would even say, because Mormons are quite true. evangelical. I mean, the concept That's of ev true. evangelism Going is like testifying. Yeah, it's oh, sure. no matter. Outside of Kroger and give shit away, be annoying. 
I, I've mentioned this many times, but no matter how many of these shows I do and no matter how many messages I get, which I do like those messages for the record, if if I haven't responded, just know that it's a combination of a lot to do and introversion. But I love when I get the message where people tell me like, hey, you're, what you did was a big part of my journey in leaving religion. I love all of that stuff. See? And and it's up to the thousands now of those messages that I've Jeez. received. And I'm not trying to brag about the number because this is the, the reason why I'm bringing up that number isn't as a brag. It's that thousands of people telling me that I have helped them leave religion still have not balanced the scale of the three people that I know to this day are believing Mormons because of me. Because they're, oh, they're wow. still... And it, 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 no, no matter how much, it just never, it never, it never starts to feel like, all right, you know, cause it, cause in, in the end, there's those three people are still out there Mormoning, you know, yeah, they're they doing are. the Mormons yeah. and I can't, I can't, it, it, there's no absolution, uh, uh, of the one versus the other. So anyway, uh. So I'm not saying don't send the messages because I won't now feel good. Still send the messages. Those are nice. They make my day often. It's it's. In fact, there are days where I am not going to make content that I get a message like that. I'm like, all right, I got to. I got to go do it. I got to go do my job. This helps people because somebody says it. So only if you feel inclined, though. Don't. I'm not now asking. I'm not fishing for comments. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to look. Comments? Anyway, uh, it's a trap. Knits a trap. They. This is a person who That's makes dope. things out of yarn. That's hilarious. Very cool. uh, That's very cool. I hope you make Star Wars like. I was gonna stuff. say. Yeah. What's his name? Akbar, Admiral Akbar. Yeah, I like Admiral your. Akbar. I like your logo too, except for that. From zoomed out, it looks some somewhat like a uterus. You see what I'm seeing? You got the uterus <laughs> and then the fallopian tubes uh, going out point. there. Yeah, maybe that's on purpose. I don't know. Uh, anyway, they said, as a recovering cradle Catholic whose parents had us in an even more Catholic cult within the church, I had a lot to unpack as I deconverted. I wonder, um, <clears throat> I'll try and take Much a look respect, out. Respect for that, actually. It's I hard wonder, to do. I wonder if, were you in the same like little Catholic mini cult as uh, Amy Coney Barrett, the the... Supreme Court Justice? Is that the one you're referring to? I'm wondering. I'll try and look out in the live chat to see if you respond. Um, somebody was asking again what the name of the book you mentioned was. Um, the Faith Instinct by Nicholas King. Excellent. Wait, PH sorry, I'm lying. Wait, Nicholas Wade. Not gotcha. Nicholas King. PH <laughs> don't know yet. Jimmy, thank you for making our lack of beliefs feel more 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 common by creating a safe environment for us to convene and solidify our convictions. You know, I don't <laughs> want to argue with such a nice, that's such a nice thing to say. Um, but. but somebody mentioned this being a safe place the other day too. And I, I think there are community offshoots of this place that are safe. I wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily say I mean, in general, obviously, you know who we're going to stick up for. But it's kind of like, for example, you know, we do we've done episodes where it's um, uh, uh, heavily on on topics of like, say, something super heavy, like sexual assault is that's come out of religion. Uh, mm. And there are going to be people that just that ep depending on where they are in their life and what's happened to them and how recent their trauma was, you wouldn't call this a safe place to be while you're going through that. Uh, and I don't think you were trying to, I, I don't think you were trying to conflict with what I'm even saying. I think you're saying this is a safe environment because you know we're going to stick up for the people who have been sexually assaulted, for the people who have been abused by religion and everything. But uh, I do want to make it clear just in case there's that other person listening that like you might want to check what the topic is before you come in and be aware, you know, non-consensual because we're not supposed to use that other word on YouTube where it's instantly off, but non-consensual sexual acts come up kind of a mm -hmm. lot on these shows. Uh, slavery mm -hmm. comes up a lot on these shows. And these are, these are topics that if you're depending on your background and, and abuse, cause we've definitely had a, a, a number of fans who have messaged before and about <clears throat> 
like telling their story of being human trafficked and stuff like that. And you, depending on where you are in your recovery of whatever you've gone through, it's not always as safe as in it. it, it even, even when a, it can be triggering. Yeah. 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 It's like how therapy is mm. awful right mm. after you go, but then it gets exactly. great. The, it's yeah. so exhausting. <laughs> you like finish and you've put all these things up and everything and you are so vulnerable, but it is a safe environment to do that. And then after the fact, you just feel like shit. And then a couple hours yeah, go by. After. Yeah. Yeah. I always have this like right after I feel exhausted <laughs> and then I try to distract myself, but then I have that sensation. You know, the sensation you have for a few hours after a nap that I just, mm -hmm. that I, I napped sensation. I get that. Like I've been crying or napping or something. It's, yeah, it's, it's weird. Exhausting. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So, uh, uh, yeah, someone just said, just take the damn compliment. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I just, I like to always be as clear as I can before somebody comes here thinking one thing. And then, you know, I don't want to be responsible for somebody's shitty day unless they're a theist. No, I'm kidding. I don't even want to make like, we had a great conversation <laughs> with Mark. That was an awesome conversation. Yeah, sure. Emmanuel didn't go so well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stacy 1904 says, so happy to see Nikki on the line. Great show today as always. Hope everyone has a safe and happy new year. Tremendous. Thank you, Stacy. Happy new year. Speaking of, we'll be back. The line will be back. Uh, uh, on Saturday is New Year's Eve. We're going to do probably starting around 9 central time. So that's uh, on the East Coast, 10 o'clock. And on the West Coast, 7 o'clock? Probably, yeah. Yes. Uh, on Saturday, we'll start our countdown to midnight and we'll do, oh, you know, cool. all four of uh, all four time zones countdowns and then go to bed. Uh, so, oh, sounds like fun. Yeah. Be here for that, everybody. Be I am throwing a New Year's Eve party for my lesbian group, so I will not be there, but happy New Year anyway. Is there, is there a way I could come to your lesbian party? That just feels like the you, right like, place for me. You just have me. to like, drive like yeah. half of the country, but it's if you a, want to, you can come. <laughs> it's a little ways away. As a guest. Sure. I always feel so it's comfortable amongst in lesbian groups. I don't know what it is. It just, <laughs> just feels right. I, I You know, I'm not... I'm not trying to hint to anybody that I'm in an egg state or something. I'm, I'm aware I'm a cis man, uh, but it just feels like the right play. I just feel so much more comfortable and I want to talk <laughs> about the same things. You know, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making, always welcome, I'm right now making charcuterie boards for friends. Have you heard of something more Ooh. lesbian than that? I that just would think be excellent it's... because I was shopping for those today and it is so annoying. You have to go into Costco to even request a platter get made. You can't even get it online. It's yeah. it's horrible. We're doing pizza, okay? I'm going to make it look sexy. We're doing pizza. I'm over it. I'm not I don't about to go into Costco and request a platter. I don't <laughs> want to explain why I associate lesbians and charcuterie together because I can't <laughs> explain it, but my brain does it. Very gay, very <laughs> lesbian thing, charcuterie. Um, well, in your defense, I was looking for them today, so you're not wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're not wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Of all for the like people, two hours looking for them. Of all yeah. the people who Still you've seen me one. here with <laughs> on this episode, on this channel, and I've mentioned charcuterie before on this channel. The day I meant I have a lesbian on, and I say charcuterie, she just was looking for a charcuterie board. I'm just saying. Yes. Does that prove it? It's, yes, it does. Okay. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> we have fun, you and I. Um, Pit Viper 64 fun. says, the only thing I could suggest is to look into your local game store. Getting a group of people to play games or RPGs with is just a way to work through some of the missing community. Yeah, I know a lot of people who, um, who do that. I like, like, I like things like Dungeons and Dragons. I do not have mm. the time for it at all. I've never learned to play. I'd love to, but I've never learned to play out. Oh, how to play it. Putting a cough drop in. My I thought to play it. I thought a cough drop would solve some problems, but I'm realizing you can hear me suck on it. I've just got dry <laughs> mouth. I wanted a wet mouth. Uh, yeah. I got oh, a wet. That's what she said. <laughs> I love you. I've got a wet mouth. Uh, <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Incredibly Ooh. supportive uh, uh, and generous super chat here from Adam Burkholtz. Amazing. Uh, if Jesus wants to give evidence for himself, he should be able to present apologetics for his own existence to all humanity. The problem with the problem this possibility causes for Christians is there is no longer any need for the apologetics. The more Christians argue for Jesus existing, the less real the religion looks. Yeah, I exactly. somebody was it you or somebody else who tweeted? I saw a tweet earlier today, and it was literally like. If God was real, why the fuck would he need apologists? Mm. Like, I didn't tweet that today, but I have said when people are like, Jesus loves you, I said, I'd so much rather hear that from him yeah. than you. Yeah. Come tell me, bud. So along those lines. Yeah, seriously. Like, God says this, God says that. I know you say that and you say this, but I would love for your God to actually show up and tell me directly. But given that he has not done that, quote unquote, yeah. he, I'm assuming just all in your head. I'd love for a Christian to even be able to tell they tell me that they love me, but not as a weapon. Like, right. It's so manipulative. And I did tweet that out. Don't tell atheists Jesus loves you. It's manipulative. And yeah. it got quite a hefty response because quite it's so, yeah, it's, it's rude in my opinion. I, I think so too. And it's sort of, it's almost this way of like saying Everything that you're saying about your identity and what you believe and what you've assessed and what facts you've considered, I'm going to dismiss offhand before trying to even get to know you at all or get to know those yeah. things. And I'm just exactly. going to be totally dismissive of all of that and just push it through. And it's literally like, yeah. it's like telling somebody that. who is an expert in anything, trying to tell them like a rudimentary fact that's not right about like an elementary fact about like you go up to some master chef and you're just like yeah well just so you know regardless of how much you know water boils at 90 degrees <laughs> the fuck are you talking about that reminds me this reminds me of this episode of hell's kitchen i love hell's kitchen it's like my one guilty pleasure but it's just because it's so difficult but um they were in the kitchen and this one girl she was boiling cold water and gordon ramsay was like what are you doing and she's like Cold water boils faster than hot water. And he's like, what? And it was just a very Wait, that got, hilarious moment. That got proven true. I'm not really? even kidding. There's actually, there, there, I read a paper about it years ago, or at least it's been experimented in, and the results of the experiment is it was true because it, the state that cold water in is in, you can get it to more, because when you boil water, you present heat, but the heat that you present is the same, like, when you turn it on to high, it's immediately giving you that high amount of heat. So in other mm -hmm. words, you'll burn your hand immediately if you touch it. It's already as hot as it's going to be. So what it is, is how long does it take for that energy and that heat to transfer into the water? And the rate, right. when you do it into cold water, something about the rate at which the cold water will go to hot is faster because of the way it excites the molecules, then the rate at which warm will go to hot because there's already sort of energy. There's something about, I don't remember exactly all the explanation, but there's something about it and they actually tested it and cold water turned out to boil faster than hot water. Will someone tell Gordon Ramsay? I just learned something new myself. Surely there's Very a limit. Cool. Like when we say cold, we mean <laughs> tap cold. I'm not talking about fucking right. bringing out your one piece ice of salt and water. the whole thing turns to ice water. But yeah, that's anyway. Very cool. Something okay. about it from the past. Uh, well, I'll have to look it up and I'll present it. And it'll probably turn out to have been like an April Fool's. Well, that's happened to me once where I was like, I actually remember one. There was a study about this thing. No, no, no. Hear me out. This thing that you would think wasn't true. And then I went and I looked it up. I was like, oh, fuck. It was an April Fool's prank. <laughs> it's on Snopes or something. It's just not true at all. Yeah, yeah. It was like back when I fucking love science was doing articles all the time and I was checking that page a lot and they put out something on Oh, I remember what it was. I it was a it was a new technology that they like uh it was a new camera technology that um you could see through clothes with. And I was like, Yeah, well, people are gonna start getting these cameras on their smartphones and they're gonna be and they were like, I don't think that exists. I was like, No, man, I read about it. There were the people, they they've got these I was reading on a science site and it turned out to be uh, it was either I fucking love science or maybe like one of those cell phone, like phone arena or something. Cause I used to live, work in the <laughs> cell phone world. Uh, one ah, of those things. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, 
you can you can leave people silly calling me an idiot. It's someone it's a Jimmy, you're an idiot. The water has to become warm water before it boils. Yes, I know that on its way to hot, <laughs> but the rate at which it will get from cold to hot is higher than the rate of warm to hot. And it's so much higher that it will still accomplish boiling before the warm water accomplishes boiling. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Kim Wilson says, I'm XJW, and one of the few subjects they've well-researched is the pagan origins of Christmas. I find it hard to believe the concept was entirely foreign to him. Yeah, because that's part of the justification. What is your source, Kim? Kim? That's right. What Kim? Is your, what is your epistemological justification? Kim, this <laughs> super chat doesn't have a single citation on it. How dare Not you, Not one citation. How absolutely could you do that? I don't. You really you, need to just you better publish a send whole paper. A follow up super chat with your epistemology. <laughs> We're teasing Kim. Hope I assume that's obvious. We're making fun of Amir. Oh boy. Micro addict who has a uh, has a channel that you could like watch cells under microscopes do things. Uh, oh paramecium, all right. That's, that's right. Paramecium. That's right. Yeah. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. I'm just trying to sound smart now. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> Mike Roddick says plenty of that pagan stuff was also covered in the book Holy Grail, Holy <laughs> Blood. They also covered the editing of Jesus and the whitewashing, etc. Very cool. So I didn't know until uh, a year ago that whitewashing, I only thought whitewashing was when you take a story that basically originally had black characters or people of color and make it white people. I didn't know it's literally just the act of anything that you basically wipe out it, so for example you could say whitewashing is also like a story where some pioneers went across the tundra and you just don't mention the can <laughs> the cannibalism you whitewash the story oh. you made it better than it you 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 apparently whitewashing and because i got confused i was reading it in a book and it was basically an example like that where it was like hey this things these things you think about these great german scientists these ones were nazis and these ones were cannibals and the re and you don't know it because we whitewashed history uh apparently oh, it's okay. yeah, yeah white the word white in whitewashing doesn't actually refer to race apparently oh. yeah i didn't know that uh let's see stephanie Learning home today yeah i'm i'm happy i i i thought i was the only one who didn't know that so i haven't admitted that until now and i'm glad that you share that <laughs> with me i'm like maybe most people don't know that i always thought white meant white someone says it's debunked cold water does not boil faster well i read an article once so maybe it is <laughs> maybe i'm wrong i don't know i'll look it up i'll look up. i'll try and find it in my history see if it uh Whatever. But you know awesome. what does boil faster are those induction stoves. Those are awesome. You can I literally. Think we one. Did we? Did I skip that last one? Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, amazing person, Stephanie is. Stephanie Helm says, glad to be, glad to have been mutuals on the Dirty Bird for a while, Nikki. Great show tonight. Thanks for having Nikki on. Stephanie's great. The Dirty Bird. Oh, the Dirty Bird is okay. Twitter. Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I agree with that. Elon made it dirty. Um, yeah, dirtier. But yeah, Stairway to Oblivion seems to have spent ten dollars to send us a violin, and I don't, I don't think you would send ten dollars to insult us. So I don't think it's what I'm. I associate <laughs> like when you say when you, I would have sent a violin if I was saying someone's telling like a sad story that I don't care about I and mean, playing the violin right. sort of thing. I don't. I think something we must have said something that this was relevant to. Is that a violin or a guitar? What even is it? No, oh, it's a violin. It's like a violin. I wish there was some context, but there's okay. no bow Thank with you. it though. Is the only thing that's weird. I don't know. Uh, hmm. Well, hmm. thank you for the money, <laughs> or thank Jimmy. Thank yes, you. Jimmy, say how. Happy for the money. Yeah, there you go. Thanks for supporting the company, basically, is it? This is how this is why the lights stay on, the shows keep running. We've got hosts, we've got we're adding new producers so I can take a break. Oh great. I need it. Technomancer Magus says, Jimmy, did you cut your hair? JK just wanted just saw the Xmas show and wanted to support the show. There was I had pointed out on uh I always know when somebody hasn't watched me for a while. 
Because their comment yeah. is always like, oh, my God, Jimmy, you cut your hair because my hair used to be long. <laughs> right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, almost two years ago now. I like, was going to say it was quite some time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But welcome back. <laughs> I'm glad you're back legitimately. I'm so happy to see you. And giving money. Yeah. That's good. Hell yeah. Uh, Nitsa Trap again says, I wasn't in the same cult as ACB. I was in the kids, then young women's group under the Legionaries of Christ. I've heard of them. But I don't remember. I remember it's fucked up, the Legionaries of Christ. Like, yeah. Was it one of the it's big something. scandals? Because uh, one of the big scandals was that what ha- was the Pennsylvania shit, Legionaries of Christ? Something happened mm-hmm. somewhere. They did they murder someone? <laughs> anyway, did you murder yeah. somebody? Nits a trap. Did you murder someone? Murdered people. Yeah. But but as part of like an underground religious Illuminati style super Catholic organization because that's I know About I've heard us. of engineersofchrist.org. Oh, I don't think they're going to put it on their website. Concerned. I just remember some I kind of. Say, I feel like I remember a scandal mm-hmm. surrounding the Legionaries of Christ. Let me see if let me see if Nitsa Trap said anything. Not yet. In response. Was there a Nitsa trap? Was there a big old scandal? I'm not just saying this to get you to super chat again. I'll legitimately look in the live chat and see if you respond. But wasn't there a big old Legionaries of Christ scandal at some point? I feel like somebody died. Got two people pregnant. But... Is oh was that was that maybe it? Did that make national news? I feel like it was something I mean, more significant though. It's on Reuters, but I don't know if that's really national news. I mean, oh. Apparently the violin was to uh, to indicate. Someone said, according to Hey Moji, the violin emoji is used to indicate romantic interest. I I wonder if that came in when you were talking to Kita, and you were like, "Well, I'm oh. a, I'm a lesbian, so hey." In hindsight, Kita sounds extremely young, so I'm probably gonna have to. Yeah, let's specify that I wasn't really being serious. So <laughs> we're not using these call-in shows to start dating anybody. That said, if anyone would like, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm so alone. <laughs> that said, you can hit me up on Jimmy Sl- Jimmy Snow needs love. I'm like I'm like two well, more months of single people. away from launching my own dating reality show on my channel on my on the Jimmy Snow channel. Who's gonna Who's going to date Jimmy fun. Snow? And it's the only it's the only show where you get to the very end and you have the last person and you go, will you accept this rose? And the final contestant <laughs> says, I just want to be friends. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how mine would end. <laughs> friend zone. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then you become a, a red pill incel YouTuber. I really wanted mm. to win. But I don't want to date you. <laughs> Thanks for the rose, though. Love it. The beautiful rose. You really great. A little wilted, but great taste in roses. I was just gonna say a bit wilted, but a little wilted. Yeah. <laughs> We've only got a couple super chats left. If you want to see this nonsense continue on, send in your super chats now. Cyberhex says, "Thanks, Jimmy. S- sheep slave Emmanuel destroyed more of my brain cells. Love Nikki and the- and a nice little." Heart emoji. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, that was a rough one. I was, oh, wow. The contradictions are just numerous on that one. Crazy. I feel like it's a rite of passage on this channel, though. You've already, you've, you, you know, a lot of times it takes people two, three show ups before they go through one of those calls. Uh, you know, it used to be Otangelo. Uh, now I just talk about Otangelo <laughs> and not, Otangelo. and I don't let him on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, please. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 honestly, it's just because it's boring. He's one of the few theist calls that we lose viewership on because he's boring. Oh. He just reads oh. his script and then you ask a question and he just goes back to reading his script. I or, was going back to the script. Yeah. Or reciting because he'll go and say, Jimmy Snow constantly is a liar. I don't have a script. I don't read from a script. <laughs> so so we'll say reciting your script. Well, you know, maybe you're not physically reading off of it, even though he's memorized it like a salesperson who works for a phone company or something. Uh, we are or working like on so, uh, one of our channel members mentioned that they need clips of calls. So I'm working on getting that back up and going. 
So on this channel, there will only be clips on days that there aren't shows. So any Friday that we're not doing Cause I Wanna uh, or Saturday that we're not doing Cause I Wanna, uh, we're going to try and have clips mm -hmm. on those and sort of, but we have another channel. I've just renamed it. Uh, it's called Deconstruction Factory, and that channel will just have clips of shows, and soon we'll get those shows back up and running, and uh, we'll make sure that the, the we start plugging the line, the the clip channel soon, once we get that going. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Rob Irwin says, thanks for the show this evening. You are welcome. Unless more chats welcome. come in, this is the last one. Kristen Beto, Bato, I don't know. Jimmy, you are a stepping stone for me getting out of religion. Thanks. Watched you for your politics. Now I'm an atheist. That's awesome. Awesome. And lovely to see Nikki. Yeah. I And I like the way you put it, a stepping stone, because that's how I like to put it, too. You, If yes. you left religion, whenever people call and they're like, oh, Jimmy, you made me an atheist. No, I didn't. You did. But I'm happy no. to be a part of your journey. But give yourself some credit. Disillusioning is a hard fucking, and it's traumatic. It, 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 yes. it truly oh to my gosh. go from religious to non-religious, religious traumatic. I'm still learning myself. And actually when I was reading the faith instinct by Nicholas Wade and realizing that the stories I'd been taught were false and that my family was, you know, rejecting me and my sexuality, my brother, because of these false stories, it was I actually cried. I was really yeah. sad. It was, it was painful Yeah, because it's, I was told Moses and the Exodus and all that stuff was true. And it's not. It's just yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Prince of Egypt, yeah. that's such a solid movie that it's a Great tough, movie. it's a tough thing to accept that it's not true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody was playing there can be miracles when you believe at this restaurant I went to a couple weeks ago. I was like, wow. Oh. <laughs> I haven't heard that in like forever, but yeah. Great movie. Beautiful visuals, but not true. Uh, uh -oh. I, kill, I, kill, I killed I Earl. killed Earl says, Here's $20 so you wish me a happy birthday. I'm on a psychedelic adventure with the art on my walls. Two sleeping pups, my rumbling subwoofer, and you two fabulous people. Good job tonight. Certainly made it a fun birthday. That sounds like awesome. an amazing birthday. Happy top, birthday in RIP to Earl, whoever that is. Top, top marks on your choice of birthday activities. Truly incredible. Uh, and yeah. it, shoot me a, shoot me a DM either on Twitter or Instagram, and I'll send you a personalized, uh, birthday, happy birthday. But for the moment, happy birthday. I think $20 birthday. is what I charge for a cameo. So it's basically the same thing. I don't know what I charge for a cameo. <laughs> you but, do cameos? Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got, a, there's a cameo account for me oh. out there. I haven't done one in months, but I don't advertise it anymore either. Trying to get on your level, Jimmy, and get some cameos going. That's right. That's right. I can, when you want a cameo account, let me know and I'll send you a referral link and that will get you, it helps you get approved oh. faster. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah. To have an existing, uh, public figure as I clearly am. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'll send you a, I'll send you a custom, uh, a little custom, but for, if you decide not to, it's totally fine. You can just settle with the happy birthday here. There you go. Happy birthday. There you go. James Peach sent no message, just ten dollars. This feels like the kiss of death. <laughs> it's the kiss of death thank here, you, just James. a blank. Here's ten dollars. I'll find you. No, I'm, that. Thank you so much, James. <laughs> oh, and it's not James Peach. It's James Pesh. I said Peach, and maybe now he will come find me. But James James Pesh. That's a cool name. <laughs> There's no Jimmy Only fans coming, Jen. Thank you, but no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's not people would begin paying me to put my clothes back on. I, I, I am a narrow person. I'm hiding a lot from all of you. Y'all have no idea. I've got two good parts, my beard. And then I'll just leave it at that. My beard and something else. And there's no way to do an only fans with just your beard and something else. There's too much in between. It might be. People are interesting. It might be. What pose would you do? I just... You probably have to Photoshop a lot. I don't know. I'd be putting sensor bars up. Nobody wants a sensor bar on OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm just saying, look, I thought about it a few times in the past, but my addiction to carbs has made this something I will never do. I understand. I just, Trust me, so. I understand. I stopped drinking and smoking, and I lost a bunch of weight and stopped drinking and smoking, and let's just say I have some more work to do. I, the sugar is 
is my favorite drug. Sugar, sugar's tough. Like I, I think I broke my, uh, a few weeks ago, I like broke my, what I would have called an addiction, not like a dying addiction, but I went through withdrawals right, right, right. for sure. I was t- I had way no, too much sugar. I and would I- commit crimes for a Jack and Coke, dude. Like, and I wasn't even drinking all the time. I thought I would miss weed. I was like, I'm going to miss weed. No, I just want no. a Jack and Coke. Anything. Alcohol hasn't really been, alcohol's never been a vice for me. However, combining alcohol with other things during certain times in my past, that, that's that been kind of a problem. Uh, but so I don't drink at all. Uh, weed, I've never liked it. I've, I, I've, I've tried to like it and I've had specific times I smoked weed that were like, mm-hmm. I tell everybody the happiest I've ever been was sometime in roughly probably around 2009, 2010, I'd smoked some weed and I was watching crank yankers and eating Doritos. And I cannot <laughs> think of a moment I've ever been happier just than that. Like, tr- and by happy, I don't mean contentness because I have a different contentness story. I mean, elated, mm-hmm. laughing, beaming, uh, another super Thank chat of death, well. five Five dollars from Bill Demar, <laughs> Bill Demarath. Uh, just, just happy to be alive, happy to be there, and just, just laughing my ass off. The actual like happiest content <laughs> moment was the night I hung out with a porcupine for like three hours. Found a porcupine in my neighborhood, and it was just eating crab apples. And I took a I'm bunch of pictures it. of it, and we just hung out. <laughs> he was, he was, or she was. I think she, but she was so nice. Uh, you know, she you wouldn't let me get too. She wouldn't let me get, she'd get, let me get within like three feet of her. But if I got any closer than that, she'd just turn around. She doesn't like try to attack Uh, me with the quills, but she'll, she'll, but she let me get pretty dang close. And I'd get my like camera good and low and take photos of her. I've posted the photos to my Twitter a couple of times. And I think it's on my Instagram too. I should remember to tell people to follow me in those places. I'm Jimmy A. Snow on Twitter and Instagram. We've mentioned them tonight. Uh, The A (laughs) stands for Alexander, if anybody's curious. Uh, you know, anyway, how do we end these shows? How do we end? Thanks. Thank you. uh. (laughs) That was the show. Thank you to everybody who showed up to moderate to our moderators. You are awesome. We've got, I got cookies and Ilya and Dylan are here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And anybody else who may have been there and missed. Thank you to everybody who has become a channel member. That is the way you can skip slow mode. If you want to skip that 30-second slow mode, uh, consider becoming a channel member. Consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon is the uh, – if if you're looking forward to a podcast version of these shows, we're planning to use the funds from Patreon to be able to hire somebody to, to mix them for that, basically, uh, oh, to be able to cool. make that happen. So consider supporting on Patreon. Tomorrow, be back here for The Hang Up. Matt Dillahunty and Aaron Ra are going to show everybody their snakes – that is not a euphemism. What? They're literally going to have a show shit. just dedicated to snakes. They've got, they oh, both have of dozens them? of them. Yeah, yeah, together. Oh, yeah. that's going to be a good show. I love show. them both so much. They're the They're best. They're like my inspiration for even doing this, both of them combined. And I listen to both Hell of them yeah. count like several hours. Throughout be back here tomorrow them. at 7 p.m. CST, one hour later than we went, basically 8, eight, eight o'clock your time. Uh, be back here Thursday for Art and Heart and Student Dr. Ben on the Transatlantic yeah. Collins Show. And then Saturday, yes, yeah, Saturday night, the New Year's Show. On Friday, I might do an episode of Cuz I Wanna. And that's when you'll find out what Cuz I Wanna is. Uh, that's, it's basically, it's, basically uh, it's just the same as the rest of the shows, but it means I found some free time and was like, yeah, I feel like going live and doing a Collins Show. Cuz I Wanna. Do you and do it schedule. with anybody else or... If, you know, people around, maybe. It'll depend. Because it's literally going to be last minute every time. It's literally going to be like, hey, I'm going to go. You want to? Well, you want to. Yeah, if you want to. I want to. I, if I, I'll, <laughs> I'll send you a text. If, if, if the times line up, you want to? Yeah, yeah, I want to. All right. That'd be fun. Yeah. The, the schedule of because I want to is when I want to. Because right. I want to when I want to. That's, that's how it goes. And then we'll do the New Year's show Saturday. I don't, I'm not promising anybody that Friday show, though, because it will depend. It's nice to take a day off every now and then, but then sometimes on my day out, days off, I get an itch awesome. and I want to go because I want to. And we did get one more super chat after all of that stuff as I've been rambling. So let me just read that and then we'll go. Wolf Volver says, U.S. eugenics writer Madison Grant, race-based eugenics book was Hitler's Bible. That sounds like the kind of thing Hitler would like. 
and I'm going to yeah. take your I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, and remind the people one more time where they can find you, and then we'll we'll play the outro. Also, thank you to Ryan who screened for us tonight. I should say that too. All right, go ahead. Uh, so you guys can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Beat the Cult, also on Instagram, and I'm going to do my best to get back into that. I have started a Patreon as well. It is not fully formed. Um, just, you know, Neil and Mikey, I don't know if you know them, they're great, um, have inspired me to get it started. And, and Jenna as well is like, go ahead and do it. So I've started it. Um, and it's just mostly for support right now. Um, but yeah, I do podcasts every Monday. Sometimes I film them prior to and then release, but I stick with that Monday schedule. If you are interested in being on the podcast, either as a theist or atheist, regardless, let me know. And um, just hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and I'll get back to you. I'm going on. Good night, everyone. Yes, you are. That's true. January Yay. 9th, it'll come out, right? Yep. We'll film January. next week and I'll release it the 9th. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm excited. That's gonna be I am fun. too. I am too. Don't don't disconnect as the outro plays. I should tell you that I should have told you that before the show starts. But this <laughs> okay. this is the outro. <laughs>